Before I start the show this week, let's all thank the snow gods for hammering the West Coast with epic powder the last 10 days. Fucking yes. The F and Red Snowboard Podcast is presented by Skyview Campers, Never Summer's innovative take on the tiny home. Designed and built in beautiful Colorado, check out skyviewcampers.com. Wired Snowboards builds quality snowboards by hand 10 minutes away from my house. Visit wiredsnowboards.com and order one today. Fixed bindings are easy to adjust, long lasting, high performance bindings built to have less impact on the environment. Check out fixbindingco.com. Rip Curl Outerwear, strength, durability, and performance. Designed to search further in the snow, head to ripcurl.com and check out the anti series jacket. I can't wait to rock this thing. New Greens, 100% organic, vibrant green juice. Buy yourself some at newgreens.com and use code F and RAD at checkout for 20% off. And for a chance to try New Greens for free, listen to the end of the show. Support also comes from Mount Seymour, Grouse Mountain, Cypress Mountain, the Pro Standard GoPro accessories, and our friends at 1910. You can use code FNRAD at checkout for 20% off at 1910.com. The Havens is a center for transformational learning located on beautiful Gabriola Island. Plan a visit at haven.ca and use code FNRAD at checkout to save 10% of their Come Alive program. Jason Basarich is from Mount Vernon, Washington, a town in the shadow of the great Mount Baker on the Skagit River. So many of us have moved to the mountains. Bass was born in them. He had a pro career. He rode and rides with the best snowboarders on the planet. There's a good chance he won't tell you where he gets his coffee because it's already too busy there. He remembers what it was like before we all moved out here. When the snow settled on the shoulder before people rushed out to beat everyone else to get to it. I just have to say, every time I see bass is a great day. Sometimes because it means I'm in the parking lot at Baker. And sometimes because it means I'm going to get to talk with one of the truly great people in snowboarding. Bass continues to be a legendary snowboarder from a legendary mountain. And he's got some wisdom to share. So listen up. Like if you're on a lightweight board, you're getting thrown around, you're bouncing off of stuff. And if you're not, you know, it's, it, the, these boards are a lot more capable in a lot of ways. Like they're just, at the end of the day, you're not tired. That weight, they absorb a lot of the impact. You're just not getting tossed around. And that thing, that thing's unstoppable, like in, in deeper. It's actually a little small. Like I'm, I'm considering, actually we're more than considering, like we're probably going to make, we're probably going to make a grip of those, like some 172 or four versions of that thing. So what is that one? A 64? Yeah. So what are... Yeah, because that's a 65 beside it. It's got about the same length. Yeah. Like that one could be a lot longer because you're where you're actually floating from is farther back from that nose. It's amazing. The pointy nose thing was was a real thing. It's a look. For... and And then it moves to the... To that FE, to that one actually. So the FEs were pointy. At well, the there was you could dig. That's like, a, so that's this, a kid. Well, right. That board originally, um, in '85, like that's that's not an exact copy. It's an inch wider. Yep. And an inch longer. And I remember those guys wishing it would float better because it wasn't it wasn't quite wide enough. It right. could probably be another inch wider. But when you turn and. It, all of a sudden that nose is pointy and if that sinks down beyond that contact point then it it hits and screws you up mm. so you start mm. getting getting porpoise uh, snow peeling yeah. off the, yeah. off the nose and i'm just if i weighed five more pounds and turn too hard <laughs> like i can i can bury it but if you stay on it you're i love the tom so i that's that's what i consider it tom um geometry because i've seen the original boards, there's some unfinished boards at uh, the Vail Snow Sports Museum in the archives that Trent Bush has that actually have pencil marks, compass, like circles and 
uh-huh. and angles and all the he he must have just been smoking crazy good weed. It, well, he was, he was dropping in on them. Yeah, and that like from day to day, he would ride them and then make the and he had that analytical mind to where he's like, if oh, if I change this, like these. All of these old Sims boards, most of all the old boards have these big open side cuts Mm -hmm. for one big bottom turn. You're not, when you swivel on these things, you're making that happen. If you stay within the side cut, it's a giant bottom turn. I got on the arm is when you really feel the difference between these things because all of a sudden you're going faster than you usually do. Yeah. And then you'd crank a big turn and it's just giant contrail. If you're on a small resort board with eight meters, type side cuts that are made for arcing on hard pack um you just you're never going to experience that and like border cross border cross boards have these old side cuts they're way more open because you're trying to go straight down the hill Mm -hmm. and they don't want the drag of that hourglass and uh, the real simple concept i i (laughs) when i talk about it to some people and they're like looking at me like i'm crazy (laughs) i'm like dude it's just i know it's an old board but there was a there was a time period in there starting with you know the oi boys on those libs where you didn't want something that looked like an old surfboard well that's i mean absolutely and that's how i got like i got here i went away from these things and i built like i have some dumb boards that i have so much camber in them you don't believe it because i've <laughs> i've already done this stuff right and um, it's been fun working with johnny because johnny's a big dude and he just wants a board that the camera's not going to go away and it's going to stay there for him so you can really like arc and uh, <laughs> I've, I've been down that road and so you get you get to this point where you're not you don't want all your strength to be utilized like you're trying to save some you're trying to get in at the end of the day that's it like you want to go true. have a bunch of fun runs yeah you want to be able to get in at the end of the day you're not wearing it out yeah, and, uh, I'm, I've been riding pal. I think you have been too for like the last six, seven days yeah, straight. My legs, my legs, my right now. Yeah, my <laughs> back leg. And so, I was on the wrong shape for the last couple of days because I didn't believe in the snowfall. I thought, ah, I'm still. I don't need much to float, but I have a proper swallowtail, which you can just ride all day, and your your leg yeah. just does not. You don't even notice it. Yeah. it's so effortless. It, yeah, it but it's hard to not look like Dimitri or or or, well, so or the, Jake with the rope going off of us something yeah, because and, you're and so far in the back. And that's the thing with these boards; like everything's become confined below 160. Like mm. you can't mm, mm-hmm. in the market, you can't sell anything over 159. So all True. of a sudden, you start bringing these big powder gun boards out. Yeah, that and it's like, okay, are you riding? And, and we've got weird things around here where we can hike and not touch a resort. And all of a sudden you're just riding pow. And, uh, and that's, that, that's why these things kind of get, need to get bigger again. Some of these swallowtails need to lengthen out. I mean, there's yeah. the dudes, those high flyers like Teal Copeland and, and Andy, they were like, we were all skate punking. Everyone's getting ready to ride these giant park board or park jumps on these popsicle stick skateboard snowboards. Yeah. And these two dudes from Cordova are part of, you know, they're disciples of farmer and Tex, and they want to literally fly off the top of mountains and they're riding on 185s. Right. And there's a hat, but those boards still had weird shape. Like it didn't, they could have done the same thing with like a 175 with a little more float on it. Right. But those dudes were literally jumping off of, like they jumped off the Herman shoulder, which is a mountain, you know, and they were jumping off of everything in the resort, like, you know, it's just, they were flying. And, yeah. And he gave up on it, got a freaking kite thing with a motor to start flying around. He just didn't want to land anymore. <laughs> yeah. Austin Sweeten and the board slide worldwide guys just put out a, an edit that definitely includes dual boys. So, so yeah. Like, and a nice, slow spun three on a doughboy. <laughs> it took me two looks at it to be like why does that look so weird why that board that looks strange? insane yeah and Those it's big yeah. big boards have a place yeah oh sure. hell yeah they totally have a that place is baker i was just thinking about it. like somebody put it out there kt22 has probably the best you know under the chair access of oh. any chair anywhere. And I was like, fuck, 
I don't know. Chair oh, six. Yeah, there's Baker. so many. Pl- I mean, it just depends. Like, there's so many of these places do have, like those open runs. Like, there's some spots in Jackson. Jackson is that, in the running for it's sure. Like, holy crap! Right under the right under the that, gondola. Right, the, yeah. Yeah, lookers right. It, that whole shoulder, if that's got four, it's nuts. Yeah, and like, you just be been. It's they, steeper got than you thing. think. Oh, You're going yeah. faster. It's longer. We don't have runs that long. That's like, true. It's that's abs- true. I got halfway down that and was burned out. I'm like, what's going on? But the steep stuff, Baker's got it in spades. It does. Like some of the stuff that you guys <laughs> ride are legit cliffs most of the year. <laughs> Yeah, you can see the bottom from the top. I guess it's pretty steep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's that's, sick. I guess you get used to that. So we're here in Mount Vernon, Washington, which I know is the home of you know Craig, Tony. Um, I didn't know that you grew up here too. Swanee, Swanee, yeah. yeah. Jeff Fulton, yeah, yeah. I knew the Fulton, the 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 bike shop was here, right? Like yep. the Schwinn. Yeah. What was it called? It was Fulton Swi- uh, Schwinn Shop. Fulton Schwinn. That's Schwinn right. Shop. Bottom, bottom, you just make two lefts here and go down the hill. That's unreal. Yeah. It was and all... So was that a hub for you, like high um, school time it, or, or grade it, it, school? It, so I actually worked. Uh, there's Old Town Mount Vernon in the west side. Mm-hmm. And then there's like the College Way Zone, which was like that was growing in the, you know, the 70s, 80s. And like business where, you know, the little the cool little part of town that was old then they started building malls and so (laughs) in one of the strip malls there was a another bike shop called bike barn and i worked there yeah and uh so we we didn't have snowboards there i started working there i was a really young kid i was 11 or 12 damn and i was there till i was probably 16 or 17 what were you doing at 11 12 years old just assembling one of our neighbors one of our neighbors stripped bikes down and would paint them and sell them in his yard, the old Schwins. Sick. And that was kind of my introduction. I'd go, I'm just rolling around the neighborhood bugging people. And he's like, clean these parts, you know, do this, take this part, put that together. And then I started, you know, putting bikes together. And once I had that figured out, I just rolled down. I wanted super cool new BMX stuff. And, um, you know, I needed to make the money for it. And they had it. You know, that was the place that had the cool <laughs> bikes. So I showed up one day and I'm like, hey, I can do that. And uh, so I started cleaning up around the shop and cleaning parts and I started putting bikes together. And I started working the floor. And then uh, we brought skate in while I was there. And But we didn't have, we couldn't talk them into bringing in snowboards. And so the Fulton shop was rad because if you rode across town and hit all the jumps there's jumps everywhere and just you know the dike stuff and checking out the river being kids yeah and you never you believe you'd pop a tire or something and you'd go in and and jeff's dad would be like yeah there's tubes right there you know i'll bring you some money when i get paid friday that kind of thing is <laughs> like put the tools back you know that that whole story and so they had the snowboards in there and they were in the backs of the bmx magazines and that's what kind of kicked me in on it i didn't really know there were you know i didn't know about jeff and craig and dan until a little bit later till that next year and they did those guys mentioned hey just rent the boards you didn't sell and so we rented those boards yeah and uh were were there sims and burton's or i think there was burton yeah burton's at first first and then then the sims were shortly after it and actually i bought my first board i bought was a burton I think it was a 1500 or 1400 performer. Yeah. And uh, my buddies were just all had 1600 FEs and and stuff. And they were just blowing by me. Like it was like this. I didn't ride that thing very long. Like it had to go. (laughs) And it was just the length. It was the length of it. It's amazing that they call, they were, (laughs) they were calling them 1500s, 1650s. Like they're, they're putting the, the length in millimeters, which is metric, which is just, bizarre yeah i still don't know what they are i have no clue yeah so that's a 150 I, I, centimeter yeah right 165 centimeter, <laughs> 1500 yeah, millimeters and if you get a tape measure out none of them oh are, none of them are, are any even, none yeah. of it's yeah close. yeah actually i was talking with rob dow about that and he says look universally the length is the running length of the board so like you have to bend the the tape it, yeah to get then then it should be exactly what it says yeah which it's still not that no it's not it's all it's all make-believe 
Yeah, people just make it up. I love what Mervin would do. Like around, yeah. This is around five foot <laughs> three. It's effective, or yes. yeah, yeah. It's, it's all pretty. Effective. How effective it's about. Some of these are longer than like, others. How much yeah. of this edge you really using? Yeah, it's amazing. They grind. They're ground out different. Yeah, like I've oh got, yeah, yeah. That that G and S there is like two inches shorter than the square tail. That's amazing. And they never changed the number on it. But, right, it's just a 160. It just doesn't Because that's what you wanted then. That's what the well, original see, uh, yeah. mystery era was, a 160. Yeah, well, the half pipes too. Like that was... 160. Those boards were the first things I was jumping around on where you'd actually like, oh, I can land and ride away. They look an awful lot like the barfoot shape, hey? Yep. Yeah, they all had... Uh, yeah, they all really... I mean, you can You can just start... It's funny because you start digging through these things and you... Your mind sees the one thing, and you realize they were all doing it. Yeah, like it, it's when I saw the when I saw the the look Lamar when he, when Bert told me that it was they actually traced his Tony Hawk like they he was like I want something okay. like this right but they actually traced like the shit you if you look at them side by side it, it's, it's like, it it's is traced. that <laughs> that's why it didn't work either <laughs> it had the cutouts into the effective edge right. but. Well, for pipe yeah. riding, it's yeah. fine. Well, there were so few people, right? And it's, it's like, <laughs> it's like, uh, you're innovating, but then if somebody's getting the edge That's, on you, I'm you giggling kinda, a little bit because yeah. that was the Baker Big Mountains Squaw, all that stuff. That's what made like okay this thing will go down this hill like you can actually make it down this hill on this yeah. this is a gimmick you're probably in trouble yeah. like you're having a bad day I have all the kids and the ladies with the funny hats are going by you <laughs> like this you've made a poor choice if you have a metal retention sheet you are probably yeah. not oh, yeah. in a good place yeah you're coming off of there like, yeah yeah i te- i te- bolted my stuff immediately immediately yeah, right i was coming off we were coming out and then trying to do that lucky stomp where you hit the holes again and oh your bindings back on <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I yeah. got, i'm gonna make it to the bottom oh, and then yeah. you try and find bigger screws uh, and just put them in a different I hole i can close my eyes <laughs> and still see like three instances where homies just came off their board and we're just spinning through the air and their board's like, <laughs> it looks like a flasher, a salmon flasher spinning in the wind. And you're like, well, oh, I don't wow. want that to happen. Yeah, in the baked I movie. I had no clue. Like, I needed to go to the hardware store, but my whole life was the, sh- the bike shop. So the first time I T-nutted my board, I used uh, rat rails. And they, oh, had, yeah. they had just yeah. that little flange the little on them. So yeah. I, I would put a washer... On yep. that little flange and those little screws. Tiny were, screw. That's yep. all that was holding me in. And there. now another washer on top yep. just <laughs> is trying <laughs> two, to make a washers, sandwich. Yeah. The biggest screwdriver possible. Yes. And then, yeah, super glue. I forgot out. about uh, stripped screws too, right? Because oh, they would just, you, yeah. you would melt the screw, <laughs> yeah. but then you needed that one. So you'd be uh-huh. like, just, oh, please, please tighten a little. <laughs> just please. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, just real. I was looking. That one's actually ready to go. That that one's got a, a hole set drilled in it. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, those are, are those heli coils or are those that, through the base? This one might be. No, that one's got to get popped out and drilled out. Yeah. But somebody somebody did that like to switch it to four bolt. Yeah, and look at that's an interesting way to do it. They just they're like, okay, that's how we're doing it. It's in the right spot. Yeah. But oh, yeah. It's utilizing two of the existing, like the leash. That's we. Or something. Part of what we would do too is we'd overhang. Yeah. Use a couple of the heliocoils and then add a couple. That's it. Yeah. And then you were good to go. Yeah, I remember looking at people's boards. Sometimes their binding would be in the wackiest spot. Yeah. Because you're just trying to catch. Well, people are trying to figure out where the hell am I straight across? Yeah. What do I want to do? Straight across on the front foot, like, a little forward angle on the back. The super <laughs> duck kicked in, and it was like, yeah. Whoa. Now we're all older, and people are like, okay, whose knees survived? Like, Truth. That, that's the test. Well, I've said it before on the show. Blaze Rosenthal argues, and he probably will to the death, 
that Jamie's method was better when he was posy posy. Oh yeah. Because you kick out your foot different. Uh, yeah. You kick out like a Euro, you kick out like <laughs> Nicholas yeah. Mueller or Terrier. As yeah. soon as you go it's duck foot, downhill. you don't have the you don't you, you now you're fighting your back leg. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a good observation. Yeah, I I I I'm so, in his camp legit. on that. Yeah, for sure. what what makes it look like that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. those when you think of the iconic Jamie shots they're old and posy posy. Yeah, he's posy posy. That still. whole crew, that whole crew held on to posy posy for a long time. There was five. There was five Jamie Lynns. Yes, there was good and, point. And like he, in a lot of regards, he survived. Like he, he just was tough. His genetics. <laughs> he's thick, dude. Like yeah, the impacts. Like those guys were like dude, ice. Why do you guys ride with like the late rival? Because the jumps are too slow. The jumps are that soft. They're too slow. Like straight Colt. I love it when Coulter says he's he's not kidding. Like those dudes would launch onto the off the ice onto the ice. Yeah. And it was yeah. I've talked to a competitive Postalist, Dimitri, yeah. yeah, Danny, um, Coulter, Dylan. All those guys was the the train that those guys would form was unlike anything that down i've still canyon, really seen down yeah. the canyon. canyon the whole mountain yeah everywhere like just whole mountain so you sick. get in line with it and the dudes are like you, you they're 10 feet above you then they're 10 feet below you tumbling across the ground and then there's two more like there was no etiquette for when you went there was no spatial awareness it was just like okay we're whirling no one's bleeding yeah all dog pile get up just knuckle drag, get going again. I remember chair one one yeah, year was just sick. cliff drops, like that one ridge, like just racing mm. to try and get the fresh cliff drops and the pockets and everybody looking for like a, you know, like you want to hit it a bunch of times so you know where it is. Yeah. Like I do, I rem- I think Farmer was around that year. That, it, the mountain, uh, it's just when you're older and you start you know i'm not big on going all oh, the mountain was so much better <laughs> like I, right he's like the other day it was deep that was the most unconsolidated snow i've ever seen in my life yeah and so i cut corn i was cruising around just cutting corners and looking at the places i would want to go and what i was going to do and i got myself into a couple of spots where it's like if i lose my speed right now i'm walking forever <sighs> yeah. like, i am so screwed and in the place i'm at that shouldn't be a factor so there's all these young people, you know, and they're like, oh, you've been around a long time. This probably was deeper back. I'm like, no, this is like to get this much snow in this kind of a storm, like really have your head on a swivel. This, this is nuts. Like be, be careful. Let's talk early days, Baker. Like, w- was it open seven days a week? No, it was open. I think they were open Fridays and some Mondays. So it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then they started with some Mondays, and uh, what like, was the pass worth? Oh, dude, it wasn't more than it was like 180. <laughs> well, I think that's I think that's what I have the first. Maybe I, I think I bought my first pass. I didn't get one in grade school. My first pass I got in middle school, and I think they were 150 bucks or something. And that's a lot of money for that time. Oh though. yeah. Yeah, like we that was have, a big yeah, deal. We, none of us had any money to do. I mean, this was expensive in that same kind of way, but you know, all the other costs. I mean, right now it's more, this is, I mean, I don't know what the dollar's worth compared to a dollar in 1983, but right. It's, it was easier to do. It was easier to hitchhike. Yeah. It, it was just easier to, it was easier to do. Yeah. And you weren't, there was no powder panic because there was no such thing. There was no such thing as powder panic. The, the just, skiers couldn't even ski powder. No. So, yeah. They were on twigs. <laughs> their, yeah. Their skis were that wide. It was, yeah. But even like, so what was the, what was the wide. mode? What, were you, you, were you coming up and just hitting jumps? All the were whole, you? yeah. It was air off of everything. Yeah. And everything set up different. I mean that that's the part that now I'm going to re, you know, yeah. go against what I just said. Sure, but sure, the sure. Part of the mountain that was better is like everyone, the people that were hitting those jumps hit those jumps kind of in the line that you'd want to hit it in. Mm-hmm. Like the can what the canyon shaped into was absolutely phenomenal. Oh, like, cool! Because there's no this it would take a long time for the skiers to get moguls in there. It was just 
traverse lines to hit after hit oh, after wow. hit after hit. And you yeah. could just go higher up the walls and you could, you could get up. The lines were so high up on there. A lot of those little side drops that are there, you could ride up into them. Like you didn't have to come from the canyon. Wow. You could actually ride up into them and then use those and their spine transfers and Jeez. that kind of stuff. So I missed, I missed that. How but, fun. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, you're not going to organize how many people are there now. Yeah, it's too many people. Yeah, That's it. So uh, we moved here in 93 and my buddy had to pass here that, you know, if he wasn't using it, I would borrow it and then come down and ride Baker. But we were riding under four. That was our, just the hit run under four was our go-to. If you went down the chute, yeah. like the chute would last, the the whole chute and that Austin side would last the whole weekend. Yeah, totally. Like you couldn't ride it out of shape. Like you'd put lines down it, but it wasn't, it wasn't annihilated. And you're like, oh, let's go hit sticky trees tomorrow. Right. Like you'd hit, right. you'd get in all the lines and it, you know. It was, you know, a utopia that you would never think of. Yeah, that's why when you were talking today about, because I'm like, I don't remember having any kind of avalanche awareness before, I don't know, before they really put in the gate at the top of Hemi. Like, yeah. Like, or at the bottom of Hemisphere. So it was like, <laughs> well, you just kind of went. It, but you were saying that basically nobody rode Storm Slab out of bounds because... There's so much stuff inbounds that it kept us out of there. You wouldn't bother. No, it, I. Uh, the reality was there was so much good stuff inbounds. It kept you out of there. And then we we got older, and were able to actually kind of see what was going on. Like our, our ski patrol was phenomenal, and they put all the cuts, all the cuts they made because they weren't blowing stuff up all over the place. Like they were mostly ski cutting that. And it was just a really good hardcore group of people that knew what they were doing. Right. And they cut all those aspects and they cut all the features to where if you snaked in those lines and you deviated, you immediately, the mountain reprimanded you. Like you saw that you got a good visual representation, but you were usually in a spot to where it was like, okay, if I'm here, this is why they're here. And when you start getting out into this, that's going to happen. Like, so you'd go into Dolphys and I'd slingshot out of their track and, and go up high knowing that was going to come with me. Yeah. But you'd cut the amount <laughs> that you want. You're like, you did baby steps. We totally. really had this baby steps to Avalanche 101. But as far as like beacons and stuff and, you know, I didn't really get checked out on that. It's terrible to say, but until I started, you know, doing cat trips and heli trips. Yeah. You know, and that, that whole alpine world kind of kicked in. Yeah. But um, that makes sense. What about early, um, what about early bank slalom stuff? Was it as big a deal then no. as it is now? Or no, was it, it was, was it yeah, like, yes. It, it was like no. neat that there like, was, it was a the thing. only. It was yeah. the only thing. Yeah. So like this is the only thing. Yeah. But it was so doable. Like you would be telling your buddies like, "Hey, come everybody do this. goes. Like, everybody let's goes. go do this." Yeah. And then you sign up the day of. Yep. Like and just roll up, and it, it's not a big deal. And if it was a pow day, like ah, maybe we'll skip it. We'll just keep. We're 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 bagging good lines today. We were just far enough down in the lineup of like people being serious about it, mm. and uh, mm -hmm. you know the. The racer guys that were like, oh, we're, this is, we're you know, this is our hard world. Boots we and train, we, this, you know, right, right, I've got right. my own ski area. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to switch from ski racing to this and, and dominate the sport. Those guys existed kind of from day one. So that was, that was interesting to all of a sudden be into this world where, you know, there's some people are serious about this already. Right. You know, we're still screwing around, but it's like, you could see. That it's a thing, and it was a gathering of like all the all the people from Tahoe <laughs> yeah. and people coming yeah. out that are trying to yeah, and the, that race the racer mentality thing was rad, but still like if you had it didn't matter what your mentality was on what you were doing with snowboarding if you saw other snowboardings you still gravitated like you just went for them like yeah. hey how's it going who are you guys it was where are you still from? early right 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 that was a because the bank solemn goes from eighty five like it's it's early. Yeah. It's super early. I, God, I don't know. I think I don't think I did one till eighty seven. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Because the first one were 15, 20 people. It wasn't yeah. a ton of dudes. We were kids. We knew those guys were doing that there, but it was like, we didn't we didn't know. Yeah. Like, we, we, what are those guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> like you've been snowboarding for like three days. Hey, there's a race. And there's people that did that. Yeah, like, people sure. had snowboarded for three days and entered a contest. And just go in it. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was a thing. Or four days. And did you feel some sort of, at what point do you feel some sort of ownership for Baker as a, like, hey, I'm from this place or hey, this I, is I, my place? We're going here. It's kind of, yeah, I pretty quick. Yeah. Because, I mean, it wasn't so much about like this is, like this, like, this is the thing. Mm-hmm. Because I'm, that mountain is visible from everywhere in this town. And BMX and skateboarding, doing that here, I mean, it rains all the time. Mm. And so we had, you know, a lot of times when I was doing BMX freestyle stuff, I'm looking for dry places, you know, and I'm like literally got my bike covered up and I'm carrying my bike across town to go to the <laughs> awning at the mall that's covered so I can practice somewhere dry. Right. Your brakes don't work when it's wet. Right. You can't skate. And then the snowboarding thing kicked in. And it's like, you can do this all the time. Mm. Like you can ride in the rain. There's right. a powder day. It's a sunny day. Yeah, it's corn yeah. snow. Like yeah. it's all these different things, but it's still doable. Right. So that, I think that kind of chased me away from the other stuff. It's like, this is, you know, don't fight it. This is what you do. And then being there all the time and then, you know, having people and then the skiers, like the skier battle thing with those guys, not really wanting you there. Yeah. And then their commentary. I heard were, like beer cans being whipped at you guys and stuff oh, from the sure. lifts. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. yeah. Good stuff. But it's so fun. Like I miss it. Right. Like right. I got I got fast because I was getting chased by grown dudes with mullets, you know. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. they're gonna throttle you. Like, dude. Seriously. Like, yeah, you're gonna get so that and they never I hid and he I'd never I hid in tree wells and like <laughs> I cliffed Dude, I'd cliff myself out and like wait for them to hike out. You know, they're cat calling. They're like, I'm going to come find you. I'm like, good luck. I'm right here. I'm like, come on down another 20 feet. And they're like, not going down the chute on those skis. You know, you'd sit there till the mountain close. You ride in at the end of the day and walk on the cat track. Unreal. Did that more than once. Yeah, it was great. So I missed that. And it was, it was harmless 80s fun. I think, you know, the, the tension with people getting catcalled and heckled and, and having that be a thing now, like when we were kids, you got socked once in a while, yeah. you know, get a haircut and, uh, yeah. you know, it's <laughs> based. Yeah. The things people are yelling at each other, not acceptable now, but you know, back then you just took it with a grain of salt. Right. You just kept doing your thing. It's a bit of barrier to having more fun than you. Yeah. I'm yeah. Having more fun than you. Yeah. And then once you can hang, they just kind of got, they, it wasn't their spot anymore. Well, it, the skis were for the ski. They were guys. miserable. Yeah. 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 And yeah. then all of a sudden now their skis float. Skiing yeah. looks beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Like candy. Yeah. When you talk about all the rad people from all these sports, like candied. Yeah. Like you just one word, like one name. And you're like, yep. dude, this guy is like, what? Yeah. Like you, everyone's doing their own thing. Everyone's doing fun stuff, but it's like candy. Like yeah. that's nuts. And the guys that are going to come up, you know, watching him ski, it, it's like, you know, I make fun of skiing all the time. It's freaking, <laughs> it's rad. It's fun. It's, it gave me, it gave me uh, something to do. It's a connection to the mountains. I think that's the thing. We're all doing kind of the same thing, yeah. but uh, people will chase you for a very long time. And they will be really pissed off when they start. And, and if they can't catch you and they have to keep chasing, doing stupid, the dumber and dumber <laughs> things they have to do, they will eventually warm up and start laughing. I've seen the, I've seen the hardest dudes. There was this guy, Paul. I'm going to say this dude's name. Paul, Paul Angel was a ripping baker skier. And he was just like, you little knuckle draggers, and blah, blah. Just any time I saw him, the chase was on. He was just, you know, give me a... A good eight, fifteen minute, I disappear, you know. Like whew, don't want this full grown full grown dudes. I'm running around 150 pounds soaking wet. Yeah. Like squeak, squeak. And uh there's one day we're having this mogul contest on the backside of the hill, and they had snowboarders and skiers, and the snowboarders had already gone. And they call Paul's name. They're like, hey Paul, I'm like, hey, I'm like, you have a Rodney Dangerfield moment. I'm like, that's my buddy. <laughs> I cut down. 
he's getting ready to drop in. And I just go across his skis and enter the course. Nice. And it's on. And now it's on again. That was the end of the day. That was an end of the day one. Yeah. He's doing a ski run. <laughs> and, and so he chases me till the end of the day. That's hit, incredible. Hit somewhere. I don't know. I don't know where that. I missed that guy. Right. Right. But one of the things about Baker that it, it is pretty much apparent right away is that there is scary fucking terrain here. Like if you're from some small ski hill anywhere, yeah, anywhere, and you come here to Baker and you look at, you can get on top of something inbounds that you're like, where the fuck am I right now? Yeah. Like this is A lot of dangerous. rollovers, steep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can't see it from the top stuff. So you guys had an advantage when you would, you know, go down to Montana or something. You're like, okay, I think I could ride everything here. Well, you would think that. You would think that, but California. I, I mean, too, riding yeah. riding resorts and, and doing that kind of stuff, like California, like there's a lot of stuff in the Tahoe area that's just as good as here. That's true. That is true. And it's not so much chair accessible, but. A quick little kick side of the road and you're you're doing it like yeah it, it's it, it's the same in that respect but when you get away from I mean, when i started traveling east and dealing with that different snowpack yeah the more dangerous snowpack, like this totally. is avalanche is like no avalanche environment is safe no avalanche environment is safe but this one is more forgiving mm-hmm. everything it's warmer things move slower um Typically, the layers are going to, when we do get the colder, there's it breaks in cycles faster, easier. It's more readable. Um, that as soon as you go east and it stays cold, yeah, it's that's a whole new and you don't know what's buried under there. You got no clue, yeah, yeah. I hit and a wing freaking, slabs, and yeah, all sorts light, of shit. super light. Yeah. I was in Utah yeah. ripping around one day, having I was having my best day I've ever had at the bird. I na- I finally nailed it, and I'm like, nice. oh my god, now I, I get it. Like, this is freaking killer. <laughs> I got down to the bottom, <clears throat> I'm all wiped out and tired. There's these bumps, <clears throat> there's these bumps right down where we're getting off, and uh. I go charging at this bump to slash it. It's a picnic table. And I just go through and blast a picnic table. (laughs) I'm like, ow. Okay, that's a thing. And it's like a learning curve. Yes. Yeah. Like, no no Utah local is going to do that. Like, why are you charging at that picnic table? Like, it looks so good when you feature when you first get there you're like okay wow it snowed 20 inches we're stoked but then it's where there's no snow slowing you down no it's just you're just blowing through right to the bottom yeah what the hell (laughs) did i just hit the cat track (laughs) and just blow her all around you i'm like i hit the cat track (laughs) that's that says so what's what's the timeline for like is there a sim sponsorship before you get into the Mervin shit? I no. Um, first sponsorship is Mervin. My but, for, <laughs> well, I rode for little shops. I rode for um, Bike Works, sick out of Everett, and we got cheap boards everywhere. And there was just every, everybody had. Craig was here with Sims boards. There was just so many cheap boards flying around. Somebody might just hand you a board. Yeah. And my first where i had a stack of boards was rankway when we were roommates and he's like you, you're riding these and i was like okay and i was riding those gns boards and then lib lib started coming on strong with the with the matt cummings board that thing was super sick and so that happened all at the same time and then but they were fragile so you yeah. break those so i'd go back to the sims half pipe and then and rotate through and i think i did that for I think I was on the Lib Flow Flowtron there for a couple of years, and then uh, then I started riding for a good now. Such fun boards with the like torsional rigidity, and then the well, snap. What was cool about those is they kind of the GNS boards and the Libs like together. When you hold those things side by side, and you lay them out, they've got a more modern shape. That all the, all the skateboarders were screaming for. We we need twin tips. It's got to yeah. go both ways. This is the, what this is the future. And <clears throat> those boards, what they did though is they'd pound out and they'd get flat. Yes. So they'd ride good in powder still. And then the camber, 
I think absolutely what kind of set us back a little bit was camber being for powder and everything instead of just for it's a sick park you know this you want it for park and resort and when you start trans getting back in the deep stuff then you want them you want them to be flat you know people are cringing right now but <laughs> camber's awesome camber has its place but on a power board not so much and i think the love that people feel for those old gns boards and the sims boards and the old libs especially the art tops and that that epoxy just would break down and it would be flat as a totally cake. flat yeah They're totally flat yeah and people like i hope so i hope like three guys are listening to that right <laughs> going okay maybe you're finally right <laughs> Because we're ar we're arguing. We're old, and we have our little arguments. It's so true. Have, yeah. My God, you're gonna win. The things I'm with never the mustache camber, and don't ride this kind of <laughs> okay. board. Don't do that's that. why I started making boards again. Is because yeah. I couldn't. Um, when when a few companies started making a little bit of reverse, it was really fun, and then it got crazy. Yeah, and then it was just crinkle fry it was everything. And yeah, death. And I put a couple boards under me, and I absolutely just got worked. For no reason i mean right. i don't need a reason to crash already if my board's working <laughs> against me right come on like and so <laughs> that was my motivation to actually start making a few boards yeah so the lib years when because paladini basically said he chose you and jamie for a snowboarder when he was the editor he's like we need a couple Pacific Northwestern guys that haven't ever left fucking Baker, <laughs> and we're gonna put them in fucking Europe or we're going, something. We're going to Verbier. Yeah, 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 from Mount Vernon to Verbier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. And it was just like he had the vision of it. He picked you guys down in in Vegas or what, like, hey, where where would you like to go? Uh, yeah, that was yeah. absolutely an unreal trip. Yeah, and uh, it was exactly that. Like, but Fawcett's on that trip too, right? Is yep. he shooting photos? Jesus, what a dream! Vien to you. Vienna tissue. Oh, yeah, nice. that was a lot of fun. Yeah, we got there. There was a a young rider that was going to be kind of our concierge around the hill, and we yep. got to top of Mount Fort, and we looked over the backside, and we're just like, we're going down there. <laughs> <laughs> and the kid, the young, that young kid was like, you, no, yeah. and we're like, no, we're, yeah, no, that's where we're going. See yeah. like, how do we, what do we do? He's like, that's Italy. You're going, you're leaving the country. <laughs> and there's, but we're, he's saying this, like, don't go. And we're seeing like, um, people on tele skis and kind of heading down there with their their backpacks we don't know they've got food and water oh god wow but, but that's you know that's who's going back there there's this mountaineering aspect and that we had just come up this endless gondolas and chairlifts to get up to the top of mount fort there and it was just tree runs there was it didn't you know it looked rad but it, it was gonna just be like little kickers and stuff and that you know that was a real that was a run and it took us all day and i think we took cabs i yeah that's been a long time now but we you know i think we end up showing our passports at somewhere and there was restaurants and a dam and tunnels and it was dark when we got back and and that the kid did not go with us right of yeah, course he was like, he's no. like i, I like, can't no, go no, there i don't I'm have my going passport i'm not whatever. going that way my dad said, don't leave the country or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was phenomenal. Uh, dude, that's awesome. And so that kicks off a few years. Your your first board with uh, Gnu, the bass, the the fish was drawn by Jamie. I only found that out a few years ago. Yeah, that was, that was, so the first couple of years, the first couple of years, it was 63s. It was like old shit, 63 and a 72. Yeah. And then when it went to um, pretty much all those short boards were out of Jamie's press, like all the MCs, mm. ev everything. Cause Jamie was selling so many boards. They kind of just were like, squeeze them into this, <laughs> this size range. And it was like 54 or 56. Oh yeah. I remember. Yeah. Is what sold. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I tried to ride them for a minute and um, you know, I could ride them at camp in the summertime. They're great little pipe boards and stuff, but I couldn't, I couldn't ride them in deep stuff like they're just too short yeah and uh, i started getting heavier and i was like i'm really <laughs> wanting this i'm really wanting the 62s and so i had a 70 for 
it, it kind of carried through. Yeah. It's like yeah. the Doughboys and that, those kind of shapes, like that was the big GNU of that group of boards. And, uh, but they couldn't, you know, this is a hard one. It's still a hard one to make boards for full size dudes because you got to designate that part of your line. You know, it's a yeah. different cartridge, you know, and it's, you know, it's like the other brand within a lot of different companies. That's it, true. I think more boards are kicking, big boards are kicking in now because, I mean, snowboarders are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Sure. And then your, your big guys are kind of anomalies. Like, you know, and here, like my buddies are loggers and fishermen they're full-size dudes and they yeah. can't you can't ride the cool new little <laughs> thing it's not that's not a thing yeah yeah you could take two of those and use them for skis it's kind of a there was a moment where the, the fat bob was the yeah, ultimate yeah, board yeah, for yeah those fat guys. bob and then there was the ride mountain series was a wide version of their timeless like there yeah. was a time where kind of every Every line in the, you know, the Burton Canyon, they, every, everybody had like a bigger uh -huh. board version of most boards. I, honestly, yeah. I think I think people people are a little high strung. And if you've got part of that as part of the line, like they don't like the when you talk about the fat bob, like that almost was like K2's identity. Yeah. And so if like that's your identity and you can't sell these cool small boards, it ruins your market. It's sure. not like okay, this is also available for you guys over here. <laughs> right. It becomes this weird big board culture. Yeah, and, you, and that's they, what it was. And it overrides, it, and it's it, like you're detrimental to your company by having these big boards around. And it's it's just, funny that, that it, that's a part of like screwy. baseless bindings and high backs, sky backs, low backs, <sighs> like... Dude, the, click like the argument. The cl people are super pissed about clickers. Clickers like, still, still, <laughs> like, uh, still. I mean, clickers. there's guys that are need to ride there. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not riding clickers. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna ride clickers. But I get it. Like, there's, there's sure. some dudes that. I mean, you got a bunk knee. You got a hip replacement. You've got reasons. I've ridden them, not the new ones, but I rode them before, and I and was like, good. oh, I mean, this could work. They're legit. But the, I mean, uh, they're they, legit. Yeah. I'm not riding them. No. But. But what ends up happening is you've got the ski boot mentality where you got to build all your yeah. you support into your boot. So now when you're walking around, you're clomping around like a ski boot guy. Yep. So, I mean, if that's what you want, sure. And I'm soft boot. Yeah, me too. I'm so soft. Richard's soft. talking about yeah. his old boot. Like, that's so, I so understood that. I have My boots are four old. year old boots right now, and I've yeah. got three pairs of brand new ones that I, I'm like, when am I going to break these in? I, br I slide. If I've got a boot that I kind of feel like it's going to fit with the program, yeah. I'll wear it a day or two. Yeah. Put and then I put my old stuff back on. That's I've got it. a pair of Vans that are like I don't know, are they 8 or 9 years old now? They're falling. You know, apart. I don't know how old my them. boots are. I think they're older they're, than I they think, think. Yeah, they probably three, are. If they're three if you think they're, they're three worn years through at the toe. Or, yeah. yeah, they're worn through at the toe. <laughs> yeah. I've gone through like six <laughs> pairs of laces. They're so I good. love them. Right I love before them. they literally need to be incinerated. Yeah, once once the perfect. once they peel, yeah. it's so it's so, so good. It's such a bummer when they peel cuz you're like, "Oh, I'm going to goo goo them, but it's going to but it's going to pull it's going to pull apart." Have you discovered the cobbler yet? Yeah, there's one. Just, the, I, was the them, I was looking at them. I was looking at them last night. Just, just keep. I'm like, my, I'm so <laughs> glad I have this cobbler guy. Uh -huh. But he let me down on the laces. He doesn't have laces. Yeah. So I was like, that's a bummer. But whatever. You can put these things back together. <laughs> like I can feel. I can tickle my foot through the bottom. I've, I've worn out that rubber. I I love them. New super feet. I yeah. Change the super feet super out feet every I've, couple yeah, years. Yeah, me too. Same. <laughs> Yeah, intuition liners for me, that's a Vancouver staple. Yeah. Those things can just keep your boots oh, going killer. forever. Just yeah. forever and ever and ever. Yeah. But yeah, it's really the I, I would rather I would rather ride a brand new board, binding setup, new coat, gloves, anything. That's fine. Just no don't boots. don't fuck with my boots. I need those I, I can't ride with brand new oh, boots. No, they hurt. Yeah. Yeah, they don't work. <laughs> And you can't grab your board. You can't grab your board. You lose your grasp Screw for like grabbing, three years. Grabbing, you can't reach down to yeah. unbuckle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, You're fighting the boots. You want, start getting shinners. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. When they started putting those metal ratchet gizmos in there, I was just like, no. You know what? I got hooked on a couple of pairs of soft. Ride had a really nice boot with the, with the ratchets. And when I was hooked on them, I was like, 
this isn't going to end well. The narrow foot people. Yeah. Those are, those are epic. Yeah. And, and like kids too. The girl, the girl K two. And there was another, oh, what was the other brand that were super sick. Uh, I know the ride ones were great. Uh, and they're rad. 32 had some good ratchet stuff yeah. going too. And once, you know, you can do ratchet and lace. I'm just, <laughs> I pull the laces to tie the bow. They can stay on all day. Oh, yeah. My, my inner liners, I don't even usually do them. I don't have I them. I get the line out of the way. I, I put my outer lace through the inner thing <laughs> and it pulls so nice around the tongue. I wrap, oh. my, I wrap mine around my foot. I usually tie my boot to where it starts to go up. Yep. I tie it around in a circle there i yep. don't lace up the upper part you don't of even boot. bother yeah if Tops. i'm riding snow that's too hard if i can hear it <laughs> i don't go near it like if i'm get, i'm not turning on ice yeah yeah i've got nice. my favorite picture from the retro um that i've had over all these retros i've done was last year and i'm standing someone someone shot a picture of me standing there looking at the pipe yeah and we'd been riding four days of powder and it was all kink, kink, and it was just, I'm like, my, my, I rubbed my knees and I ride straight down the middle and I went in and had uh, some cocktails. <laughs> Where is it at? Soda Springs? Or? This one's at Donner. Donner. Oh, Donner's nice. Those that, guys are dope. Ooh, too. So we wrote the, um, the GS last year too was, uh, I finally figured it out. You can enter modern board and old board. Yeah. And then you get two runs for each hey, so you nice. get to go down this thing for four runs excellent soup and the short the course is only like 45 seconds perfect so you don't even you don't dig into your wind or anything oh, that's it's, killer it's just fun and yeah I, US, I had a great US day up there ski team yeah. kids are down there on their the new death race boards that are like 30 pounds just super posy posy and in 40 seconds they can beat you by 15 <laughs> <laughs> and you're like how Holy how shit. except for faucet F like, yeah yeah you can't faucet, faucet can hang faucet yeah. can hang faucet but it's like hang. it's it's pretty impressive just just watching that world well you and fulton yeah. are driving down there I, I even looked how long of a drive it is about 12 hours or yeah something. it's not it's not terrible if i can if i can hop in with you guys and i'm i'm in dude yes yeah. This is, I've been meaning to go for years, but it's hard to show up just by yourself as one guy going like, Hey, I want to interview everybody. Oh, boy, you, know, I, you can't, this is pretty easy. Actually, yeah, that, this, easy. that crowd, that this yeah. is, this is yeah. that crowd. Yeah. These are, these are the guys that they really, they really know how to live down there. They've kind of that whole, yeah. that whole scene, that whole culture, that whole group of people, um, that help create all of this. They just really it's just a neat thing to see like people come from way out of town and, and just kind of see what's going on in that area because i mean the area itself it just has all the history to it and you start looking around and you're seeing things that you've already seen yeah in videos yeah. and clips yeah. and then the local young people that are tearing it up there you got it you just it just you're immersed for sure and then uh yeah and they know how they know how to have fun you know the the band the the, the hatchets band is just oh my dear. god fortress fortress is the best <laughs> dude it's so good yeah yep. it's really good the drum, yeah it's out of control i love it yeah i've been meaning to go but it just yeah the, i think it's at the end of march right there's yeah, other this stuff year, it's on, usually right? the weekend before this year they're they're pushing it back because yeah. there's a a thing in, that they're doing in stratton now too. oh yeah the the uh, that was it the homesick thing yeah and so many people are going that, to that too. too. Holy jeez! Yeah, that looks yeah a little smaller pipe. Yeah, the old guy pipe. Yeah, yeah I mean it looks. I want to do an old guy pipe series, just where it's like twelve foot pipe everywhere, even ten foot. Summer, I, yeah, yeah. I haven't. I was. I took off late. It was about eight years, seven or eight years ago, and I went to Timberline for the first time forever. Oh, it's so fun! And went and rode slushy super pipe. Yeah, and I was just. I mean, that's all I did. I just hiked it all day like i didn't run pipe is like so uh, it fun. really uh, it really taught people how to do everything else like like training in pipe like six hits and then hike up six hits yep. and hike up six hits and hike it's up. good pace too yeah 
<laughs> yeah, it's nice. It actually it's, is it's, a good it's pace. It's a good pace. It's a fun it's way to a spend, nice and, fun way you know, to spend the day. T- 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 yeah, your legs feel like get you strong. You did something. You're totally. If you don't stack too bad, you, you're, you're doing pretty good. Did you coach down at Timberline back in the? I never coached early at days? Timberline. Um, wow. Uh, we were always there. We we do. Um, we'll probably do like six or eight days straight. And then and then leave from there. And then I'd go to Whistler. I'd go to Kelly's camp. Yeah. And I think I was a camper, one or two years. And then I started I started um, coaching there. Sick. But co- I mean, coaching there was just like, I, I you're back in the era of coaching. Like this is like that few years ago when I went to Timberline Seven, so whatever it was. There's like private coaches mm-hmm. working on very specific tricks. Totally. Like this, you know, it was really intense. This was mostly like just introducing people to to pipe riding, and then you know, younger people. Like what helped me there the most was like Noah Brandon and Jason Brown were my roommates. You know, I'm a Baker rider, and I can do a bunch of tricks but I've never really transferred that to pipe. And so those guys both helped me, you know, transfer my tricks into the pipe, you know, and added stuff that I didn't ever think I would be doing. Sick. And I'm like in my late twenties, early. Yeah. I don't think I was there in my late. Yeah. It was all late twenties. Um, I think my last year there was 28, 29, but learning like actually getting confident in pipe and having all these young because michael chuck you oh, know, al yeah. clark yeah. he's still killing it we've got you know morissette and it, you know there's just a lot of rad canadian riders that are a little bit younger that have had these pipes that were you know totally. really doing this stuff. yeah they came out of alberta cop had like perfect pipes so yeah they were they were shredding kevin young oh yeah just shredding ky yeah unbelievable dude, just shredding smoothness and you know, there's something Michael really sp- Michael Huck. Yeah. Michael yeah. Chuck. That was, <laughs> that was nuts. It was out of control. Those That's two opposite ends of the spectrum. Like Kevin Young, just like flowy yeah. the whole way. Michael Chuck, just like, what are we seeing? Yeah. Like, how is he going that big? Yeah. Ch- change, changed it up a little yeah. bit. Like that was, I mean, that's what we're seeing now is like these out of big change up. off access every jump. and and coming into the backcountry like stuff that's so big that it's it's gone back to like sean farmer big and damien big but now they're spinning and and then coming out of the spin and still having uh, yeah like another 20 feet to go before they hit yeah, it's, they need bigger boards <laughs> they need bigger boards. They need bigger boards. Need bigger boards. Yeah, when you think about like that that uh, Steve Graham make in Snowboarders in Exile, Damien and him go off, the, and deep. Steve lands it. Like that's got to be fifty feet. It's got to yeah. be forty, fifty feet or oh, something. Yeah, dude. Steve, Steve was going as big as anyone in that era. Oh like, yeah, is this in Zoom. a lot of this era? Like that in dude, this era, right? In this era, yeah, that, like yeah. His, his, it, at yeah. his age and his fitness, like just how jacked up he is, how ready to go, like just yeah. the hype, like he's just so hype. It's so rad. Yeah, like he's just he's still he's still that dude. Yeah, I was a Damien guy. My best friend Chris was was a Graham guy. Like Steve Graham was his guy, <laughs> and we 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 would wear the headbands and the whole thing. That all came from. Watching those guys just ripping. When the, yeah, back in the era where there was hard boots and stuff, mm. I, I was the worst. I was one of the. Me and Mike were, you know, I was right behind him in the heckle category. I think he's a little. He's got more. He's got a bachelor's. <laughs> you know, I'm still working yeah, on mine. Yeah. But yeah, the hard boot thing was just like. It was, it t- had the tie to skiing. And then so th- right. that whole flip factor when you're trying, like, no, don't make it look like this. And now when you go back, like, when I look at it now, and then I'm getting to meet all these guys, too. And like, dude, yeah. why are you, what, what's your issue? Because <laughs> <laughs> they're nice people, yeah. No, it's serious. Yes. Yeah. It's so good. Tom, Bert, and friggin'. Yeah, like, like yeah, Dana. exactly like that. Like, Bert, like, I never even understood what Bert was riding down. Like, oh yeah i mean oh my it, god that, it, it, the it, stuff that dude was standing up yes. like start seeing it yes, and i'm like yes it's hard to 
and he's so tall and he was so freaking smooth the and making smoothness. it look so effortless yeah and you start to see those zones and you're like holy shit i remember dude. asking him sometime like is this is this you and he's watching a well like i just did like five turns i would have done one right and, but he wasn't being he wasn't being arrogant he was just, just going that's way he looked it. at it he goes i would never turn five times on that yeah it's it's one and done but he was doing that on skis when he was like a little kid right right? and that i was getting at is too is that that whole ski thing like we literally were battling skiers right and so there's this whole forefront like don't make snowboarding look like skiing right and then you realize later just it doesn't like i didn't make fun of backflips till i learned how to do them right like i'm I'm that guy like i'm gonna go okay i can do this now too yeah look it sucks yay (laughs) do the (laughs) backflip like you know and i'm still i got kind of slid out like i still kind of like that a little bit yeah yeah um, yeah 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 maybe just a little bit (laughs) (laughs) but um yeah now when you look back at it and it's you know it, it's just so crazy what people were freaking doing it. well i remember seeing farmer do a backflip pretty late in the game at baker like just following like i'm like oh there's sean farmer he's riding by himself and he came around uh like the upper lot and there's a big there's like kind of a wind lift there that's always there just oh, the yeah. bottom of the run and you know if you land flat on that you're walking out it's kind of a, it has some consequences <laughs> yeah. and we're falling farmer and he just threw one of his like pounding <laughs> arms out backflip things and brings it around and lands and rides away and i remember being like it was late in the game for that to be a thing like eh, farmer's still doing back close but <laughs> But it was impressive right. at the same time. You know what I mean? It was like, ah, oh, fuck. Well, yeah, like, who's still doing this stuff? Like, right. And that, it's like it, you, the whole cycle of what's cool. Yeah. And, and, like, you figure out none of it's cool and it's all cool. Like, That's it, it. There was nothing that was cool. It was cool people. Yeah. Whatever they were doing was fucking cool. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's just, yeah. Because, like, what I see... Yeah, all the tricks that are happening now, like the crazy when you take the X Games and it's just six rotations, <laughs> and it's like okay, but they need to do that. Yeah, like that's like, like a lot of older guys are like just do a method, and like these kids that have keyed in, like these super rad kids that have keyed in, like okay, I'm gonna do a triple twisting super cork and i'm gonna throw two me- i'm gonna throw a method in the beginning and yeah. a method at the end yeah, for yeah, these yeah, grumpy yeah. old dudes <laughs> totally. like shut up totally like, you sick check there it is like, yeah threw it in the middle of it yeah and so that's that's the whole thing like you gotta like what people are doing well also there's in, in some in some <laughs> way and you kind of touched on it there in some ways the coolness factor of skateboarding and snowboarding bmx windsurfing surfing whatever you want to do is in the guy that's like i can do it and i choose not to like there's a bit of a grump in there that's going ah fuck it's not well yeah yeah i mean skating skating for me is a that was a crazy i didn't get to skate as much i was bmxing Mm -hmm. um i was snowboarding before i skateboarded had a skate had a skateboard rolled down the street on it but i wasn't i was dropping in i would drop in at our local ramp on the skateboard when people were trying to learn how to do it because that's all i knew how to do yeah like i'm riding my bmx bike and i'm doing drop-ins on our on our heavy end Rollings, and like that, yeah. that's terrifying of like course setting your and like we would do huh. the old legit like drop in <laughs> yeah thing and uh so i wasn't afraid to drop in on my skateboard so i would like that was like i knew how to do that but i couldn't i couldn't grind or anything yep and so after after bmx I just got super hooked on skateboard and the reasons like I said this one to you earlier we're having coffee but I was at a contest and Matt Hoffman's hitting the roof yeah and like and I know how hurt like some of my friends have gotten just gotten and people in the sport and like what people are doing and I'm like I don't want to hit the freaking roof <laughs> Like, and at that, and this point, and like, I'm a baker rider. We don't hike out. Like, you, you're tough guys. Like, I don't hike out. I don't get cliffed out. I, I ride it out. That's yeah. like what you do. But like BMX, I was just like, this is, it's become too much of a problem. The bikes are too much freaking money. I'm always breaking them. I can't fit it in my car anymore. And I'm literally rolling around behind Tommy Guerrero. And he's just making this look 
so freaking fun. Smooth. And he's not, he's just clicking off the jump ramps, yep. hitting the ride wall, you know, doing a little wheelie out. And yeah. I got to say that to Tommy. I'm like, dude, you're making this look too much fun. He's like, get a skateboard, bud. I know where you can get one. <laughs> like, he's just like hyped. Like, yeah. And that's. I mean, it's, yeah, God. The, Wait, what years are now, we talking? Like, 86? Like, peak Bones that was, Brigade? Probably 86. Yeah, that makes sense. That was Cause, 86. Because BMX 86. was... BMX had its moment with like ET and the kids are riding around on their bikes. <laughs> it could have been filmed here. Yeah. Like it looks like here, right? It's California, obviously, but yeah, it, it's here on a sunny day. And so like BMX is what we wanted to do, but then kind of, I don't know if it was back to the future or was, I don't know what main movie it was, but it, there was something where <laughs> it was driving. We, we all, it was driving. <laughs> it's you, just, you're right. I it think was it's driving. Just driving. Now, yeah. now you're driving in a car yeah. and you can I mean, go for ever, like, places. For like, yeah. For like six months, I had my bike strapped to the top of my rabbit, and I'm going to North Van. Right. You know, right. everyone's right. skating, and I'm the biker in the, and now I'm the biker in the way. Right. Right. Like, and you're silent. Fight. That's the thing. You can't hear yeah. the biker. And you're fast. You're faster. You're quiet. Yeah. 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 It's it's difficult it's difficult to use uh, like a skate park mixed yeah. with BMX and it's even worse with the scooter kids. <laughs> that, that's the end of it is really yeah, it. absolutely because the kid the, when it's a kid with no etiquette and he's silent and he can go anywhere. Yeah. You're fucked basically. And then, <laughs> now the, wa- and then the Walkmans them. kick in and yeah. no one can hear. <laughs> Yeah, so now yeah, now yeah. your ear pods and Walkmans. And so that. yeah, for you it was like friends saying like, "Dude, there's not enough room for your yeah. bike in here. Grab a skateboard." That's cool. You guys want me to come? <laughs> like, that's not. You leave your bike here. You can go. I'm like, okay. One of the things that's sick about you is that you've always, in my storytelling, my head, like had a connection to the music too. Like, listen to Black Sabbath was behind the. The, the sidewalls, I love that, and just like you know, <laughs> well, Damage Incorporated. Everyone song. hates social media now, and I'm like, uh, like this is what we wanted. Like, yeah, it, this is this we Fuck wanted yeah. access to all of this stuff instantly, instant and daily like, we life. Were, you're that ripping. age. We yeah. were if we saw a skateboarder go by on the TV in a commercial, like you had to sit there and watch. For two hours again to see if that <laughs> commercial was going to come on again. Yeah. Like, what was that for? Who was that? What's and Mountain what Dew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm totally. getting that. Coors Light. I remember buying Coors Light because they had they put something, skating or surfing or snowboarding <laughs> yeah. or something. I'm like, that's our beer. Yeah. Is Coors Light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, just, it's that simple. It's working yeah. in shops because yeah. that yeah. was, that's where the music, mm. um, that's where the music was. Yeah. Like, We'd go like Fallout existed in Seattle, and they had all the punk stuff and skateboards, and they sold it all right there together. Sick. And we're like, "Whoa, this is crazy!" Sessions was like that too, right? Sessions, Joel was was yeah. His music. warehouse, the the tapes and CDs and everything in the back were it was out of control. That's like, rad. That's, you know, all the all the Dead Kennedys, all that, all everything was was right there and all those bands are a lot of those bands are from right there. right there yeah. so it's like the stuff you know the the old screen presses with the spray paint and oh just yeah every, it, it all came out of one place like it it was there and the people that did it were coming through there as well so you would meet randomly you'd meet people that's how i met ranquit is Sick. i had a i had a buddy that his dad was out of town and we're they're 13 or 14 and I'm 14 or 15 and they're leaving. And this is where we skated. It was a covered space. It had Grady Windsor's. Um, I think it was eight and 10 feet or nine and eight feet half pipe. And then we had one of those old, um, those plexiglass ramps that are all over the plate, the Northwest that were from like some roller skate tour or something that, there was one exist. on the way to Baker from Canada yeah. forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you'd see it and you'd be like, is, Timmer's what house. is that? Those things, there was a stockpile of them in Blaine. And so people would get their hands on them. You know, we had one, we stuck it, we stuck it over there. And so that was a drop in for um, the launch ramps that we had set sure, up. Sure. So there's cool. a couple launch ramps. Yeah. There's that ramp, a half pipe, and this covered space was freaking huge. So these guys. My buddy's folks go on vacation, and we're like, let's have a skate jam. 
and we're that we're little brother age. <laughs> yeah. Like, and there's yeah. all these hash, you know, there's Craig and Jeff's generation are running around and they're, they know this music scene. They know the skate scene yeah. better than us. We're just kids basically. And, uh, so we start kicking the tires on this, like, Oh, we're going to have a skate jam. And then somebody's brother's like, well, we'll bring our band. And like now there's three bands and I'm running. <laughs> right. I think it was the summer where I was going to be a freshman. Like I'm going, I'm going to be a freshman and the high school's right by my house. So I make flyers. And I start printing them in the office. I just, you just roll, you just did things like that. Sure. Little hash kid. And you're like, what are you doing? Oh, project thing. Don't worry about it. Like, <laughs> 200 copies. I made, I don't know how many copies I made, 50 or 100. And then we kept going and doing that in other places. And like these girls, I couldn't remember who had driven me. And this friend that I've been staying with in Alaska, she's like, oh, I drove you to Fallout. And I'm like, okay. So then we dropped off flyers there. Wow. And then the kid, more kids made more copies and took them. We met people from Oregon. We're like, take these down to Oregon with you, down to your local skate shop and hang them up. Same thing. Can't, like these things made it up into Canada. Holy shit. So it's, I think we probably started that on Monday or, you know, the week before. Yeah. So a week later, we're having this rad skate jam. Rager. And it's like people are really showing up, and we're thrown by fourteen and thirteen year old kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's um, amazing. And, and and we're like, okay, this is cool. And then it starts going, okay, this is too cool. Okay, now the bands are playing, and there's a sea of people, and there's skinheads on the roof, and it's there's parking ev like all up and down this little country road, and it's just it's gotten totally out of hand. And I'm standing on the ramp and I meet Mike and he's like, well, this is, this is sick. And he's got the same voice when he's 15 <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm like, and he's like, I ride a Baker and stuff, and, you know, Craig and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Oh, those guys. I'm like, yeah. I like, he was talking to me about like, I knew who this dude is as a BMX racer. And I know he snowboards a little bit, but I don't, you know, I, I don't know how, how far that goes. But he's, he's filling me in on a little bit. And he's like, yeah, you'll have to come skate my ramp someday. And uh, I was like, right, I'm come to Seattle. I don't even know if he had a ramp yet. But it's like that. I think I at vivid, 15 he did, yeah. I vividly yeah. remember um, meeting him on that ramp. And then shortly after that, it just, it, there's just people, the green drum set, coll collision, chaos. I wish I knew all these bands' names still. There's the people know, but... It was freaking killer. The cops show, and years and years later, I find out about the police version of this story. Right. The cops show up, and a small little county sheriff force at this time. Maybe, I don't know, it's a couple of city of cops, but there's like maybe four or five of these guys. Yeah. And they're like, you guys got to shut this down. You got to go. I don't know. There's 300 people. Four, I don't know how many people are there. There's, there's a lot of people. And I'm going, oh, shit, cops are here. We're all screwed. We're all going to get in big trouble. And the band's are like, you guys got to go. Sorry, guys. This is our party tonight. The band's good, kick out the skaters. Good, good night to the police. Oh, to the police. Uh, it's time for you guys. We've heard what you have to say. That's wonderful. Time for you guys to go. Whole party's chanting, time to go home. Like, like To the police. Yeah, they got to go. Oh, years and years God. later. Years and years later, I'm at a little... A little kitschy thing and uh, I'm sitting there talking and this girl's like oh you're from Mount Vernon my dad was a he was he started with the Mount Vernon Mount Vernon um, Police Department and on his rookie night they're like hey we're gonna go bust up a party this you know just simple thing a bunch of kids have well the music's too loud we're gonna go shut this down and that was he showed up to this and those guys were like what like freaks just straight up people with mohawks skinheads the Navy base Back in that day, all the Navy dudes from all over the country went to all these shows. Wow. And it was the skinheads. It was Whidbey Island. It just was in effect. And they were rad because they kind of regulate. Yeah. Like they're, they're a little more grown up. They're a little of more course. put together. Sometimes they'd be out of hand. Sometimes they were like the saving grace. But I think in that instance, they were like, yeah, we, we've got this, but you guys do have to go. Like, <laughs> I'm very, very sorry. You have to leave. That's uh, yeah. What a day for a cop. Hey, so this girl's fill, this girl's filling me in on it, and then she's like, yeah, "I think he worked for the state patrol." 
is they, there's a little yellow car in that town and none of these guys could ever catch. <laughs> that's your car? Yeah, that was my car. <laughs> I'm like, that's great. I'm sitting there going, geez, this actually went a little farther than I thought it did. That's incredible that you, at that young age, have a successful festival, essentially, an impromptu skate jam yeah we didn't we, band yeah, fest we, didn't, we had no clue like what you could well that was i think i think me and a couple of buddies right that at that point just kind of realized we could affect our environment Fuck in yeah. a positive or negative way right like, you gotta right be, you gotta be careful a little bit were you guys going to shows at that point like are you oh, like yeah. the hatchets and you've got like old judas priest tickets yeah. and original mostly, metallica mostly stuff. Punk stuff mostly punk stuff. natasha's and yeah um, yeah, the, the girls across the street were, were in a punk and they're, they were older and they just drag us along. That's what you need is yeah. like, we just, we got drug along. We were tag alongs <laughs> on all this stuff. Sick. Like going from like the mullet, like the mullet went into the mohawk Yeah, and like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it did this transformation. It's going back into the mullet. Like it's, yeah, but that was, yeah, that era, uh, was super good for music just the yeah you come, come up to vancouver too there's was, tons of shows going on yeah, it's it was out of hand it was so cheap yeah it was so affordable was there was there in seattle was there was it like nirvana like kind of grunge days or pre-grunge it, pre, it was pre what were the big it was like the butthole surfers oh, and so good you know it was like that was all yeah it was like right before like, yeah just kind of just on the cusp off. because really no before means, it was dude, no means no oh, auto, man. no means no shows the butthole surfers and no means no was just like whoa you know yeah. and then a band like you know the dead kennedys or something would be on the they didn't get up here as often they'd get down into seattle but like natasha's in bremerton um, like we had the local, we had our local granges here and the accused, the accused is oh, from yeah. Whidbey Island Shit. and they were, they played every other weekend. So good. And so if you went to one of their shows and all of a sudden you'd get keyed in on, you know, the mentors or like some crazy band that you wouldn't have heard of otherwise. That's so sick. But it just, the ball, that ball just keeps rolling. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, I didn't get into any music until I was out west, really, because back in Ontario, you'd have to go four or five hours to go see something that wasn't yeah, just Chicago. like pop rock. You know what I mean? Yeah, you had cross border. Oh yeah, if you went to Chicago, sure, but it was so far off our radar. Right. By the time we had our cars, it was like we're gonna go to Rhode Island and try and surf. Okay, you know what I mean? We're yep. gonna. We're going to snowboard in Vermont. <laughs> yeah. We're like, and the music thing wasn't as important. But then as soon as it got to Vancouver, it's like SNFU's playing. There's like DOA's and playing all the time. Every other weekend. Yeah, yeah. So you're... I hadn't yeah. seen DOA till recently. Oh, no way. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, so good. That was... Circle Jerks. Or they, I just yeah. remember... Yeah. I remember seeing um, the Cadillac Tramps came up. And there was like eight of us at the show. Sick. And I was like, you're you're in Project 6. You're in this movie. It's so good. Like, it's snowboarding. We're all snowboarding. Like, <laughs> we're all snowboarders. Why aren't there any other people here? And they're like, mm, we're, why are snowboarders here? Right. But then the, the, I think right. either the next time they came or like, you know, just Caught like, on to it. Yeah, think about like Pennywise too. Like yeah. early... No effects, Pennywise, that kind of stuff. I think Pennywise more than most. Penny, yeah. Was like yeah. all of a sudden there was just skateboard and snowboard people just mobbing yeah, those board shows. Board aid kicked in. Yeah. Yeah, and all yeah, all of those, all of those punk, pseudo punk festival like that era. Yeah, Warp Tour starts yeah, up. Tour, all that. That's stuff. what I was searching for. Yeah, I Warp was Tour. Absolutely, yeah. what I was searching for. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they, the first what? Warp Tour, there was a magazine called Warp that had like. It's BMX skate and snow. Music is such a weird like you go and wood, music. You yeah. look at the we talked about Woodstock. Like Woodstock, yeah. like all of those. I mean, that was the first time people were like, "Oh, we can all do this together." Mm -hmm. Like okay, and then you know my parents' generation's music, how killer it is, and the, like dude, the Led Zeppelin guys are still around. Oof, yeah, you know, the Rolling Stone. I saw the first 
we're not playing concerts anymore. Rolling Stones was in 89 up in Canada. Like, that's when they declared, we're done. <laughs> we're folding up shop. We're absolute too old. And we're, we're too old. Ups. It's 89. When dudes were 50, like in their 50s, yeah. like we are right now, and their yeah. grandparents yeah. and stuff, they didn't do anything anymore. Right. And they, that was it. Here's here's had, a crazy I thing. I pulled the filter off of my cigarette. Yeah. It's yeah, time yeah, to die. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> like... Uh, I, like, I, I heard Ringo Starr in a podcast and he was talking about, cause he played on some of the John Lennon stuff. I actually think him and Harris p- played. So the, but the Beatles, he, the way he's talking about what their lives were like, like they would go home to their wives. They would go and do music from nine to five. That was their job. Then they go home to their wives who made chicken dinner <laughs> and help with the dishes and watch the news. Like that's what the Beatles were doing. Like because that's the, what people did. Yes, that's what everyone was doing. So are you boys still going to be playing that racket? <laughs> exactly. And, and, right. You know, it's like are Rolling we, Stones is we're transcending in generations and right. opening up people right. to like. They're still playing now, probably. Yeah. You go see the Stones right now. They're, they're doing. Yeah. Somewhere. He's. he's probably writing a new song right now. they're in their 80s like some of them are in their 80s now <laughs> willie nelson we saw willie nelson in his 80s like five years ago yeah yeah only people that did that were old blues musicians right right again who right. were ahead of the curve like yeah. they're like no this is this is what i do like, yeah this is you know, quit RL, doing RL the Burnside. thing that you like, do. i own a bar and i play blues music <laughs> right like, right this is what you do yeah those yeah. outlaw country guys are crazy like those stories Mike Judge does a series on outlaw country, and oh, okay. so somebody gets shot, and everyone <laughs> they're just shooting people and fighting, and get, the gun just fights. going off. Yeah, I was down in California. It's not a bong, Willie. I could. I, oh yeah, you guys <laughs> you it, accidentally uh, shoot you. You shot Chucky. You shot Chucky. Yeah, I've heard a couple of those stories. So like. good. But you guys, I mean, in that baked movie, you guys are shooting a bunch of boards. I bet you wish you had some of those boards you were shooting. Oh, or were they all broken? They, they were all busted. Yeah, they were busted. Yeah, they were all folded up. The right? gyrator. I, the, uh, but that Burton Air, like the OG Air. Yeah, the purple. Air. Oh, yeah. That one. I've, got a, I've got an extreme in the other room that's yeah, that era. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that having that back. That was, that was a Burton Rider. Yeah. That was shooting his own broken board. <laughs> that ended up on live. Yeah. That quit live to go to Barfoot. <laughs> That's amazing. But yeah, the gun thing, Barfoot. we don't have that in Canada. Well, we were duck hunting, like in the fall, when you're sitting right here, mm-hmm. you will hear people shooting geese. What? Really? It, just that it's, like, it's they, down the hill. The, farm, the fields are, they're just right there. Like white and, geese or like Canada snow, geese? Snow geese. Snow geese. Snow geese, Canadian geese, and ducks. You can and shoot. So we grew we up can't like, shoot Canada geese. They're against the. It's against the law to shoot those things. Yeah, we can shoot. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're they taste lovely. <laughs> Actually, I didn't grow up. I did not grow up duck hunting at all. But like just being in the woods and have like just shooting, just shooting. Uh, rifles and that kind of thing. I I did a little bit of that, a little planking, mm-hmm. but um right after high school like my last year of high school um my buddies my buddy was crazy about duck hunting and so i just started going with him and i i got a dog and i got a black lab and i was like i want this dog to be able to to be able to do this stuff and so that was it was about training the dog it was about hanging out with my buddy and his ducks our our ducks and stuff down here they're they don't exactly taste that great (laughs) just because we have we're fishing we're hunting tidal flats and stuff right so they kind of they end up with this this mud flavor and so they you know jerky the heck out of them you know, sure yoshitas discovered the yoshitas yeah and i'm trying to make these duck nuggets they're pretty good but it's i'm now i'm shooting these poor ducks and they don't taste that good it's not like if they tasted like pizza i'd shoot more <laughs> but they don't but like that's that's where the shotguns came from yeah, most of these, most of the guys around here got shot. Like so is that roll buckshot? Around, you'd roll around. It's buckshot, and then you got to pick out it's the, duck load. Actually, what's what, duck load? It's just lighter. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Buckshot. You start getting into goose loads and stuff are almost kind of a buckshot. Yeah. It just goes down the scale. The smaller the thing you are shooting at, the smaller the the pellets. And then do you have to shotgun. pick them out when you're eating? Yeah. Them oh things? yeah. Absolutely. And they've gone to steel instead of lead. So like back in the day, everybody was eating lead pellets. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's don't, crazy. Don't, don't think about things. Yeah, there's a definitely. I mean, there's a hunting hunting aspect up in Canada for sure, yeah. but not everywhere. Deer yeah. and elk, I get. Yeah. Ah, the ducks. Yeah, I'm just I'm laying off the ducks. And then fishing. When when does fishing kick in for you? Because you're young. Well, I work. I'm you're, working you're on, on boats. I'm, I'm working at um, skate shops and snow or bike shops. At this point now, I'm I'm leaning on. I want to get away from bikes, so I'm trying to work at snowboard shops. And I did that for a minute. And um, to make more money around here, it, you're trying to jump on farm equipment. You're trying to, mm. you know, you're doing what's going on around here. You know, you can make pretty good money working as a logger. You can make pretty good money. If, you know, if you get in tight with a farm, like all of a sudden you're driving, you can drive a pea viner and it was, you know, double the money I was making. Um, I start doing that, that kind of stuff and my asthma kicks off. Mm. and it's like i can't be around i can't be around the dust and i i picked night pea vining because i'm brilliant i'm like well it'll be moisture it'll keep the dust down yeah all it did i got a heavier shots throughout the evening and uh so that sucks and a buddy's mom or a buddy's dad was uh he's like hey you uh you need to be on a fishing boat i know some guys because there's no dust out there like just real no-brainer right yeah and so i go out i'm probably 17 almost 18 and uh we go out through the pass here and we go out the river and like i love the river you know it's just it, the mountains and the river have been the thing here it's it's the thing here like, it's what it's, raised it, you yeah this river i've never i mean, i haven't always lived in this town but i i in during fishing season i'm two or three days a week on that river and so now i'm getting to go out our boats were kept in the mouth of the skagit and so now i get to go out and boom, I'm in the salt, and the whole world just opens up. Sick. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting out there, and they're all looking at me. I'm like, what's going on as we're running out? It's kind of lumpy, and we're eating pizza. I'm like, hey, you want another piece of pizza? And they're, like, acting weird. And they're ch checking to see if I'm going to be seasick. Right, right. Like, see if, because that's, a lot of people do one-and-done trips. <laughs> and it, we're yeah, rolling around yeah. out there, and this is great. Hey, can I touch this? Can I run this crane? Hey, can I drop this anchor? <laughs> hey, can I, can I fillet that fish? I don't, you know, just this whole new world. Amazing. And uh, that really, uh, fishing was as big a deal to me as snowboarding ever was cool just because of that whatever adhd thing that a lot of us deal with where you have to have this constant motion mm -hmm. i just got that like you can go you know this well, all this water goes to alaska i like, turn right <laughs> right you go this way it's like there's a compass okay it was just way too much fun so that really you know and you can make a little bit more money and uh, it just added freedom. The especially if you can be on, a, especially if you can be on a boat and you can hang, because like there's a different type of person that's a, goes out on a fishing boat well, for thirty I days. Most, or I whatever think most people really can't. I, I think once you push through, like, I, I've, yeah, I've I've been on boats where people were so lovesick and homesick mm. that they just you know time, can't hang. Time to go. Yeah, and they're off. They're off. Like you could see it in their face. Mm. Like you're working, and all of a sudden they're like. I don't ever want to hear you say another word again. Like I've met, yes. I have the best friends I've ever made in my life have been like, we're just going to keep dropping crab pots for days yeah. like, over and over. This is great. We're going to make snacks later and catch right. another fish. Right. To use right. for, and it's like <laughs> the, the monotony of that will drive people. Some people can't do it. Absolutely not. But yeah. if you don't do it, if like, if you make it through a full season and then you understand like the beginning and the end of a lot of stuff and like how like you do the math on it, it's not that bad. Like, right. So I have watched people though. Like there's want to swim to shore. Yeah. I remember my buddy Jamie telling me that he'd just come back from Alaska and for, for, because you get a percent or mm -hmm. something. He, yeah. he got an extra percent for eating the food guts out of a live fish or biting its heart out or something like kind of guessing where the heart was and <laughs> hey he got the heart he got another percent so there's goofy but there's yeah. beer drinker goofy but the yes. boat. Yes. i got really this is that's another thing i got really lucky the guys i started working with family oriented serious you know no 
no just games. work just joke you know some jokes, jokes some but, jokes sure, sure but they're not messing with people yeah, on yeah, the yeah, regular yeah, yeah, yeah. you know they're trying yeah. to actually maintain a crew and it's it's all business there's no no beers or anything on the boat there's there was fisheries that i almost got into where i brought my day bag down i'm getting ready or my my sea bags and i'm getting ready to take off with these guys for two months and there's shit everywhere yeah and i'm like no you guys are clowns I'm not like, doing I'm it i'm not here for that I'm yeah like, i'm out yeah and uh seems like you make good decisions in your life like the last place you lived at you got an acreage you got boats you got toys you got all the things <laughs> Um, I mean, if I was, uh, if, I'm glad it if, looks that way. <laughs> yeah, if I was gonna guess, I'd be like, oh shit, okay, he comes from money, or he married into a rich family, or something. I've, I've, uh, <laughs> yeah, should have listened to Craig more. <laughs> <laughs> Things would be really, really easy. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't give up easy, and uh, and I've always all of my jobs, like all the people out there doing work, you have to like your job at some. Mm. in some mm -hmm. respect yeah and uh, you know i think about all the different jobs i had and how many of them i didn't like and it, it's if if i didn't like one it was my own immaturity because sure. you, you can use all of these anything you're doing you can use to make good steps and uh yeah i mean just not not given there's i've yeah i've moved before because i just blew it you know and just and start up again yeah know, and just have to have to start over and, and just just don't ever give up and then enjoy it. The harder you are on yourself in these situations, God, it's terrible. I, I can't believe how hard I was on myself when I was younger. Like it just, there's no call for it. And, and I think, you know, you all, hopefully everyone gets through that at some point in their life. You know, I really, I really hate it that I have friends that are, you know, even a little older than me that still beat themselves up over things. And it's natural. It's human nature, but I, I think that it's our I think it's our our culture. Like just coming back from Belize, I don't see a lot of people beating themselves up, even the young people. Yeah. Whereas I think to a person, like I've always kind of been that guy that's a thinking guy, going, "Shit, you know what's going on in my head is all this like, you're no good. To think that's not good enough. They don't like you. This, that, the other thing." But I was always afraid to like say, is this what's happening for you over there? Like I was just assuming everybody else was having like the fucking, they're cruising, they're loving life, they're having fun. And now that we're in our 50s, it's like, holy shit, it was that bad for you too? It, oh, it was worse. Yeah. yeah, it's easier. Yeah. yeah, it's easier to see. If it's easier to see other people succeeding, that's a good check. Yeah. And... Like when I was racing BMX, like there was, I totally had it, but mentally, mentally I wasn't a good competitor mm. and I would, I would, if I was out front, I'd slip a pedal, you know, if I, uh, you know, it just silly shit, yeah. second or third, second or third. And it was just, it was, and, and you don't like, I'm thinking, oh, I don't have the right thing. Mm. I'm, mm. I'm in the starting gate. I'm not, you know, I've got asthma. Like mm. I'm just, I'm, mm. am I'm immediately thinking about all of the things that I'm dealing with instead of just being there and going, putting my head down and going. Interesting. And I didn't get that figured out till snowboarding. Yeah. So did that translate into snowboarding? Did it, it, did it, it did. trickle I, in there yeah, a little I, bit I, sometimes? I won one, and I was like, wait, a, oh, you can just win one. <laughs> Like you can just freaking win one, like yeah. just fucking win one. Yeah, yeah, sick. You know, and then that same kit. You know, I'm like the only. I didn't get into tons of snowboard competition because, it, you know, this is oh, like back in the day with, with Timberline too. I was so frustrated with, like our, what we were doing for contests, was like, what is this? Boring. Like his weird like the Timberline has that huge natural pipe. Yeah. And it's like this, you know, my not thinking of the future, but it was like, why are we going back? Like, why are we doing, why are we doing this? Like I did a lot of that during that era mm. of, of mm. competitiveness. And when border cross kicked off, like that was appealing, got into it late, did okay. Did really good. in a couple Yeah, to where I was like, okay, I should have been doing this, but now it's like, Age, people are frothing yeah like, i just don't have it i, like, yeah. I don't even have what about the filming to, stuff like because you, you were talking about filming with cardiel so anyone whose favorite guy is cardiel knows 
his body of work is amazing but like not tons he, he didn't well he was doing so much skating and yeah he's he said yeah. it he's like that snowboard world was a little weird yeah and i i felt you know there's a lot of times where i went places where like i don't belong here <laughs> like fuck i just don't i don't freaking belong here like i don't know and my money and the clock and the money is just going yeah. like to even be in those places and right. you're like right okay and then again it's like you know those the movies that were made i think i don't think it could have been any better like realistically i I mean the little the things the little things that i did that i hang my hat on pretty freaking good like i'm I'm okay with it hell yeah and then when i see what people were doing as groups those solid groups that stuck together and did those things together there's a reason they had success and it's they stuck together and they work together yeah and that and if you're and there's a luck factor in that to where people are smart enough to put whatever it is on the back burner and especially in that era where it's like you know the hatchet brothers were doing this and it's like people are, what are you doing right like what yeah you're climb up there and, and now you're making a rock climbing video like right you, you know like what how does that fit into like it fits into our dream we see the end result we got the players we got the pieces people believe in us and we're making it happen totally and I think everything got so fragmented with money coming into the sport in the early nineties to where it was like, Oh, now it's a money grab, do the thing, just whatever, just slap shit up. Yeah. It was just yeah. so yeah. much people slapping shit up. And it's, it's cool. The guys that really have something that was really epic to hang their hat, like these moments, like Johan just TV five. His part in yeah. TV five. Like, just like, dude, that, that guy yeah. gets to watch. You just watch it. If it was me, I'd watch that over and over all day. <laughs> like, Honey, check it out. Are you watching that video again? I'm like, yeah. Like, I do like one cool little thing up here. I'm like, Honey, I haven't seen this. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. you still, that never goes, it never goes away. Well, that was, I love that you say, like, we wanted social media because I've never, we've, I've never had anyone on the show being like yeah positive social media but that was like it's all happening because of it like yeah 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 we've literally torn down the tower of babel that's it it's like you can hit you can hit translation like yeah japanese people i met 25 years ago in japan on the side of a mountain are messaging me and i can hit translate that's that and it's like are you kidding me? yeah like this yeah. is freaking phenomenal yeah you know guys i hung out with in tasmania like are you kidding me That's like we sick. can just we can just chat a little bit every day and you were close enough to some i mean you became one like gatekeepers of like this is how you do it you don't do the full sellout you don't do the this isn't just imagey <laughs> This isn't just sitting around taking a, a fake posy you, you picture. This is you gotta you ride. Can't not you gotta, blow it unless yeah. you blow it. Unless you blow it. Right. Like I right. crawfish. I feel like I crawfish back from the devil a little bit. Like I, I snuck. I snuck backwards. <laughs> I was the worst. Like in a lot of respect. And what I was trying to do and how I, I went like just not listening to myself. Like that's just listen to yourself like and like now it's easy it's it's always easier you just to just if you it's hard to believe when other people are telling you not to freaking believe right it, right and it's you know when you know you have a good idea and you're just being told no for no mm. reason mm -hmm. like it's it's on you and now at this point it's on you you can't convince that person so this is still on you yeah because you need to be able to use your words and communicate you can't just pound a Schmidt and then you go through the gears in a GTI like that. Right. No one's that you just disappeared. Like that doesn't, doesn't help the cause. You have to do the thing, whatever that thing is. Right. And you got to prove it to yourself. And if you're doing it because you love to do it, then that shines like through. My board, the boards, yeah. my, my damage boards that I have, like just hooking up with Jay again. Yeah. Like I hadn't seen Jay since we were kids. I see what he's building I'm like we're I'm like we're already on the same wavelength. Yeah. And then we start making boards together and we're actually like Jay was the first guy that I'd built boards with on that level. Like he's so good at it and then to just have my ideas happen that easily. Yeah. And like and have him just go, "Yeah, like this is a this is a great idea." 
Yeah. You know, and both and people have worked with both of us, and they're like, "That you can't work with that guy." <laughs> like, like both, like, yeah. like yeah. people are making like, "Well, Jay's hard to work with." I'm like, "You should try, you know, dealing yeah. with me sometimes." <laughs> yeah, and like the both of us being able to, to to get that out of each other is crazy. And I've got a physical representation of of that. That's why I like collecting too, though. Yeah, like, back to Tom. Like you ride Tom's boards, and you know what he was thinking. Yeah, like there's a mind. Like you'll get it. Like you, you got it on a 16 FE, like you did, you ride this thing down a hill, you'll go, oh shit, this was kind of built for me. <laughs> I love it. Like, I love it. It's kind of a, it's, it's kind of amazing. Yeah. I like that you ride the stuff that you collect too. If it's rideable stuff, that's not going to powder, right? Like you're probably <laughs> yeah. not riding a lot of no, the old I, No, shit. I'd like, I would love to ride, I would love to ride that old GNS board, but um, it won't, it won't handle it. Well, yeah, it wouldn't handle it back then and now it's 30 it years it later. It won't handle it now. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you could probably just send the specs, bring it up to Wired and have them build you one in the same shape. Yeah. With the, you could even do the same graphic now. That's what I was saying about the t shirts. Why buy a t shirt? Yeah. Just make whatever exactly you want. And this is uh, this is that instant social media. That's thing. where we're Everybody's at. Everybody's yeah. filming themselves, yes. doing their own music, yep. you know, their own edits. It's just, there's so much ownership with, with these young people. They get to do these little groups of people that are doing the things at Baker. You know, I don't drag them into this, the poor kids. <laughs> but they, I mean, they all rule so hard and they all just, they have these, it, it's fun watching them grow together and, and figure out all this fun stuff and having pal surfers come into the equation. I mean, that's the ultimate, I mean, it, it's, it's what the sport was. And now you've got, you know, back in our era, it was like, well, it's really hard to stay on these. So give up on it. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. yeah and yeah, it's yeah. like, no, don't give up on like people are like not giving up on it. Kick flips are real They're on snowboards. Yeah, they've happened. You know, kick flips yeah. over the road gap <laughs> is probably going to happen. Oh, yeah. Like it's it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I saw... Maybe set up an airbag, guys. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, well, before I... I'm not throwing that out in the world, you probably could put an airbag down I've there or something. I've definitely heard a conversation or chimed in on a conversation where it's like it's just a longer timeline, yeah. right? Like we were, we didn't know if we could do triples, even though there was skiers doing triples all the time, right? Yeah. Like we were like, well, I don't know if we can physically do that. I, I believed in it because I saw people <laughs> overshoot. Sure. Like ooh, the, the first ooh, snowboard ooh. I ever saw get broken, yeah. I think was a double, like an unintentional double. Oh, wow. Back. And it was an FE. Yeah. And this ripping dude was just charging out the jump and hung up. Got some scent. Zam, zam. <laughs> and he's yeah. rotating. Yeah. Like, holy, and he was real air. Like he was way up there. Yeah. And I heard the board crack. And I was like, holy crap. I was over on Blood Alley way back in the day. And I was like, that was an eye opener. I'm like, oh, you can just fly through the air on these things. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And it, yeah, so it's only a matter of time before the power surfer guys just start doing stuff. They're closing the gap. They're closing oh, yeah. the gap. So, yeah. and it's fun to watch. I, I mean, I, it's a little, like, it makes me feel like when I'm doing my filming of myself, there's <laughs> not much point in, in doing that anymore. Uh, well, it's, it, you, you need it, though. Like, but it's, it's, it's a part of the thing. Yeah, it, was, it was, like, the imagery of it was what drew me in, yeah. right? Like, flipping through the magazines and seeing Pappas doing a mashed potato or something. Yeah. You're like, how the fuck did he do that? Dude, JD with the lean Dracula. JD with the Dracula, the of course. Dracula. Unbelievable stuff. <laughs> so wild grabs and then just gaudy gear. Yeah. And like, but just but smiles, God awful. blue sky. And now it's like snow. the funniest, it's yeah. the funnest thing now ever. Like yeah. people throw that. Start people, throwing tip grabs. Yeah, people coming back to to that, and you're like, yeah, and you got to set your board. You can't even do it on these boards, right? You have to right. set it way back right. seat, right. and then with these older knees, like trying to do a cross rocket nowadays, I'd probably have to go to a 24 inch <laughs> stance just to be able to like, grab that thing. That whole era of rockets, so a cross of, rocket, of the mute, bus driver, like the big mute the, rockets, the steer it, steer it back. Yeah, all oh that yeah, stuff. those dudes, those skate dudes i was telling you about they're a little older than us that had that just dialed yeah yeah bill gordon bill gordon had the steeziest 
style on those things. You just throw it out. Yeah, Bill Gordon, um, Bart, and Hollenbeck, those those guys were they were as good as anybody. I yeah, love they, that. They could they could have just kept yeah. I'm surprised those guys don't ride anymore. Dang it, guys. <laughs> yeah, one I'd of the love to, I'd love to see those guys throw a cross rocket right now. Yeah, when I was when I was forty, I was riding with my friend Graham, he was thirty. Eric Jenko's on the lift, he was fifty. And my goal was like, oh, I fucking hope that I'm still ripping pow yeah. like Janko when I'm 50. So now I'm starting to look at people like my buddy Fred yesterday. He's 56. He's still ripping. Like, we're going to get to 60. Yeah. I, I forget who it was that I saw. Scott Klum dropping vert. 60 years old, man. Yep. It's like, holy fuck. Yeah. We can do this in our 60s? <laughs> yeah. Really? But you got to you got to tap the you got to you got to back off on the gas a little bit right now. You got a, a little bit. You gotta, saying that saying that yeah. our and this is 10 years too late talking about it. It's 10 way way too late. Craig was working on it in his 20s. He think well, he he riding backwards. Well, okay. Doing the friggin' yoga stuff. There, another dude at Baker, um, Dan Buking. I think he's 67 or 68 now. Yeah. And um, he just, he's retired. He's ripping all the time. And he's, he is that longevity thing. This guy's, he's, a, he's physically, he's just, he's superior. He, he's one of those dudes. Okay. Man. But he's yeah. just, he's going after it. And uh, the other day when he says like, yeah, I think I've been riding into my eighties. And he's like, but yeah, it's only like 12 years away. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, whoa like holy cow and i've known this i've known this guy since i was a little kid but i just the joy like he walked away from me and i was sitting in my rig just like smiling like this because this has been the thing we've been working towards like how long can you do this like truth are, are we gonna be like my great grandparents generation or like that where you just you check out yeah. You know, you hang out on the farm and you just kind of tootle around. Walk around the mall. I know a lot, you go to the a mall lot of these walk old the Scandinavian right. skier cats. Dude. That are just, you know. They, they just keep getting older. I, I keep watching them. They yeah. keep getting older. They're still going. And they're just charging. And they're like, you serious? Yeah. And like at 30 years ago, <laughs> when they were my age, they were going, don't follow me. You're, you yeah. can't do this, little kid. Yeah. And now it's like... You guys are still here. Wow, we got thirty more years. That seems impossible. Yeah, it seems impossible. But I, I, I'm I'm very hopeful. Yeah, I always when I think of <laughs> when I'm not snowboarding, like I'm like, when am I gonna do this to? Till I I always see myself in a wheelchair. That's why I'm no, like, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> don't, yeah, don't picture that. No, but I mean, I'm, like the, the I'm end super game. fucking like, I'm old. The, I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Totally. Like I'm just like, okay. I, uh, now <laughs> I, I saw someone walking down the street on the way to the TJ thing, and he was. It looked like the kind of person. I have no idea about the guy, but the story in my head. He's walking with his wife. They're both limping around, but it didn't look like they were limping from getting hurt. It just looked like they just ate and sat their way well, into a spot where they just can't move anymore. Yeah. And that I, mean, I don't want to go there. I think like right now where I'm at, like as far as like any big like big lines and big big jumps, mm -hmm. um, it's not. It, it's the trickiest thing is I'm still capable. Mm. But you need to. But how big of an impact can you take? Because all of the, it's not so much the big, I mean, the big giant bone breaks that scare everybody off is, you know, people heal from those. Mm -hmm. When you start doing joint ligament damage, mm -hmm. muscular damage, you know, you've got spine, you've got nerve connections that mm -hmm. you've, you've worked really hard to put those things back together. You're, ris you're risking those in a weird way that, because you're already vulnerable. Like yeah. you're, you're vulnerable to those impacts, like just tumbling. If a double tomahawk right now at my age it is like that doesn't put me like you, you get up you go down you have a cheeseburger and a beer and you're skating later that night right in your 20s right and now it's like okay what do i need a ct scan what what folded underneath what like how come my foot i can't feel my feet right now like it it changes uh, yeah my scariest moments have been have been like 
my hands falling asleep while I'm sleeping. Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, I wasn't lying on them. It's not good. I'm like, is that the fucking COVID vaccine? What the hell is this? It's a compressed disc right right here. Right, right, yeah. Because we've all landed on our heads. Yeah, I've had that. I've had that. (laughs) I had a, I had a, I had a, I was trying to do a turn in front of uh, my buddy Jamie yesterday or the day before, and uh, Hmm. I shot some snow at him, but the, 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 the thing I was carving just ran out. So now I'm in the air. And then I just landed on my back in powder, but on a mogul that like, just like, it Set was like a, a shock, crack. Just it was just like a crack, shock. you know, like yeah. it's like I cracked my back backwards. And I was like, I had to take a moment. Like, is am it, I dead? Is it right a good now? crack or back? Oh, it, it, it's a good it crack. was a good crack. It wound up being a good crack, but it was so loud and scary. <laughs> yeah. It's like, geez, that's like two months that I've been waiting for that to go uh-huh. back that way. And then I'm, but I, and then I'm looking at him, going, "Did that? What did that look like? Did that look like an old guy did just you like hear breaking that? in half? Did you just hear yeah, that? Yeah, the 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 health moments thing. I mean, you were talking about it last time we talked about. You were going for it like as if there was no tomorrow when you were a kid. Uh, like yeah. just everything, I, just going hard. Yeah, I did, but we all were. Like I don't, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think that's that special in it. Well, you're following farmer and and I mean, everybody. Yeah, it was just tax that people that are going humongous. It was crazy. Mike was so crazy because he came in later, mm-hmm. and he was like, "And we're all still kids." And this dude's a full grown, and he's a big dude. Yeah, and like so that opens up a whole another thing. Like yeah. he hits, you got to dig him up, kind of thing. And yeah, he's like not. You know, and he kind of opened the door for Teal and Andy in a lot of respects because he's like, he literally jumped off the end of Table Mountain. Like, that's the biggest, that's the biggest thing there. He jumped off Table Mountain? He jumped Mountain? off the very top of Table Mountain. Like, we would go up. I took him up Whoa. there. I don't know if I even took him up there. We just used to go do this. Like, we would yeah. go up looking at Table, and I would do this little bunny line. It's big. And you jump off the side of table in a little chute. It sets you up for a rock. And you hit the rock and huck a Louie. And yeah. go way down the hill. Yeah. And Mike one day is like, I'm just going to go off the end. And I'm like, well, he talked about it for a while before he did. So I'm how, don't jump how off big the end. is that? It's a mountain. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't count. The distance, tape measure runs out. If you jump off the top of a mountain, you just jumped off the top. I mean, before I get the tape measure out, it's a world record. Yeah, it's a mountain. He jumped off a freaking mountain, dude. I hype. I'm like, that landing's going to get flat. Like, when you get to here, like, I'm looking at, like, this is the only geometry I've ever done in my life is like hucking myself off of cliffs. And, and he's like, no, it's, it's steep enough. I'm like, yeah, dude's, dude's from Texas. Like he jumped, he jumped off the freaking mountain. I, there's pictures. I wish I've got pictures of it saved somewhere and I got to dig, I got to yeah, dig, dig it out. up. If you can do it before next Wednesday, we'll, Good we'll put God. it here. Yeah. But that one that you showed me today of you off the... I, I don't know what you even call that. What is that? The diving board? The... Well, we called it the diving board. Yeah. And it, it, it turned into the beast. The beast. Yeah. And that whole zone... It's monster. I, people are going to scoff at this one, but I never... I hadn't seen anyone jump off of it. I jumped off of it probably early 92 93 we're wow. jump we're jumping off of everything yeah, yeah as you go out and so that the corn that is, zone there then that's that, right there the yeah tea, there's this footage of one of the young dudes at the hill right now that like we bomb straight line there's a tree well right there where you can look over the edge you can just bomb straight through there yep he tore that line apart the other day he absolutely came in from the top and just slashed the whole cornice and then flew in there like nothing to it. And you're like, if you trip right there, like it's, it's, it's like Exposure. a little Canyon. Yeah. There's, there's snow there, but there's, you know, you can go through, hit the, there's a lot of things that can go on right there. And so, yeah, seeing people up the game in that zone, like a lot of people ride that zone now. And, uh, yeah, I, I was trying to figure out how many times I've jumped off of that thing. I've got one picture of me jumping off of it. I've done just about every friggin' trick I know off of the thing. It was one of the best landings on the hill. Sometimes it wasn't that big. Right. Like sometimes you'd get off of there and you'd go off the side. There's lines at it from the side. Yeah. It, it, it's just a, it's a whole nother play 
realm that you can you can get the into. landing's so steep the landing's so holy steep, shit you can you can <laughs> you stick it like even if you scrub a little bit yep. you're a little you're 270 you come around <laughs> whew, yeah because you know, that's the fall line you're you, still falling when it's, you touch down it's the closest thing to woodward we have around here except it will avalanche <laughs> and chase you yes, out of there and this true. like if you are going into that zone make sure you have it You've got a game plan, and there's people above. You got a team, and off that side yeah. because yeah. if you misjudge that thing and you get folded over, you know you could go. You could go. Most of the there. people that are getting to it now for the first tracks are, they've set an intention early in the yeah. morning, right? Yeah, yeah there. I, I think that there's. I mean, with the real, there's so high profile now. Yeah. that people realize they have to. They got to make sure to put something down on that. Yeah, I I was in my, I think I was in my early thirties, really done a lot of work on myself. I'm feeling good. I'm riding more than ever. And I went out and it was in really good shape and uh, not quite as good a shape as that picture, but it was in really good shape. And I threw a little three off of it got down into the valley and I just had a wild hair and I'm like, I'm going to go switch off of this thing and I'm sending rotations. Whoa. I dropped in. I climbed, just climbed right back up there. Usually in a day when I would hit that thing, it hit it two or three. I ride, usually when I ride lines, I ride them over and over half a dozen times. So I, I drop in, I drop in switch, send my rotation and my first my first, I spun the opposite way that I did the first time. And there was a, a big snow ledge. Like I left probably 18, two foot snow ledge and I hooked it with my board and it sent me ass over tea kettle. And I'm like, I haven't crashed off of this thing yet. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm taking one and I just stay balled up and I hit, hit, hit hard to where I was disoriented. I bounce and immediately go into cat sprawl. And all of my, I can't see, I'm not really sure what's going on. And I've got, I'm, I'm just trying to pull myself back together and I can't. So I hit again and bounce again and start to go into another sprawl. Oh God. And I pull my arms in and now I'm like, dude, you need to, whatever you hit now, you got to stand up. You just cracked this thing like an egg and it's chasing you out of here. And so I'm tucking I can't see anything and I don't really know why I'm like totally blind. My I'm Tweety birds, I'm backwards and I'm tucking into the Valley as fast as I can. And I'm just trying to, you got to get to the pinch point. I'm like, get to the, get the hell out of here, dude. And so I'm going back. So I stopped bouncing off little trees. I'm starting to bounce off Christmas trees and I, I write myself. And what has happened is my jacket has been ripped off of me and my peeps, my peeps are holding my Grundin's underlayer on and my jacket is up over my head and all in my hands. And so I, I ball them up. I stand up. I can see I don't have any goggles on and I stand up and I'm looking around. I'm like, okay, the shit's not coming after me. It stopped on the first rollover. Yeah. It's not coming. And I bomb down into the flats down there and I get my coat off of my hands and I've got a ball of shit. And I get down in the chairlift and I'm glad this, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad somebody saw it, but this is one of them things where it's like, no one took a picture of the three. <laughs> right, 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 right. And so I sit down on the chair with, there's this awesome ski gal that's been there forever. She's a freaking ripper, Jesse. And I sit down on the chair with her and I'm like, I'm seeing stars. I'm like, focusing on what my name is. And, uh, I'm like, how are you doing? And she's like, great. She's like, Did you see that guy die? There's a dead guy in the valley right now. <laughs> oh, no. And I'm like, oh, God. Of course. This Because there was kind of a cute girl yeah. watching. So that's like shooting me with a cannon. <laughs> and uh, so we're rolling up. And I'm folding my jacket out. She's like, bright yellow jacket. <laughs> and she's just... It rips in it like, oh, are you going to grow up? What's wrong with you? Why are you, do- why are you doing this? And I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea. And then I rode back out there because <laughs> I've always like, you got to get back on the oh, horse. God. That's my game plan. Um, anytime I've taken a big crash like that, I, you go right back up. And because you don't want that fear to creep in. 
and uh like that's that it, when you're it playing with it. like yep. this is silly young guy stuff like yeah like that's but it, it's kind of real <laughs> you just try to stay focused and i got up there and I dropped in and I cut hard right and rode the <laughs> I rode the wave down. Yeah. And was yeah. like, that was good. The bounce marks were were those pretty good bounce marks. But yeah, Jesse, that was yeah. So there's a witness to that one. That's so <laughs> rad, man. I had my goggles. I managed to somehow grab my goggles. I had every I didn't lose anything, but it was it was really tore up. But that whole that whole zone, um, it's really cool to watch people get in there and do stuff. Cause it's just, it's that pit, it's that next pitch. Yeah. yeah Even yeah, that shoulder yeah. that's right there. It's just, it's about as big of a line as you're going to ride anywhere. That is like just straight doable. Right. And now you got the peanut gallery, you got the whole crowd watching, you got everybody on the chair. You, people are oh they're they're almost about to go in there it's, and you got you got the old guys chiding it's way too early it hasn't settled yet <laughs> it's all gonna pop yeah. someone's gonna get buried yeah, yeah. it's su- it's turned it's such a rite of passage now to where like i mean people do that they're gonna knock that off they're gonna do all the gaps at baker and then that's kind of yeah. they've got an interior you know they've got a motive here on how they're how they're going up this this chain to where they're showing themselves that they can do this stuff and it's like man that's crazy it's a wild spot it's a pretty high bar all the hitting all those things it's a wild spot i love the gap that uh i if i if i if i know where the gap that pat mccarthy always takes the The home run yeah Yeah. it's home run right it's over home run Uh right we uh, i watched my friend brad just case both his knees on that in like 93 like it's going straight to flat on that yeah. is when it's not even a pow day. You know what yeah, I mean? We just came up to like hike around and yeah, and well, and so build much. a little backflip jump off the off the road. Well, that's yeah. I, when I walk like the skiers. When the skiers do the road gap, they don't build. They don't put as much woo on it. Yeah, like they right. It, it's it, you know, and all the different. Those, Send you way just down. building that yeah. jump like yeah. you want a guy like pat to make to make sure he's building that jump. the right cause... speed and the right the <laughs> yeah. right in were there trees on it or something when we were young there, were... actually there used to be a couple there used to be a couple trees i think to the right right there yeah i think that oh, he just now. didn't he didn't like pat it down you know what i mean like he just was like i think i can send this and it ended him he yeah. was like my knees have never been the same oh, yeah wow yeah man yeah, it's. I didn't think it was doable. It's one of those things where it's like I don't think it's doable. Now I see those guys, yeah. they're hucking double corks off it and, <laughs> and making it look like uh, like a like a mini gap. Well, it's what's funny about these. I mean, there's big park jumps that are twice the size yeah, of all this truth, stuff. Truth. It's just real. It's real world snow. Parks and it's are like, going away now, though. Can, Parks ah, are going away. Yeah, they seem to be. Yeah, yeah pipes too. Pipes are gone. There really aren't pipes, and yeah. there's nothing in Canada except COP. I think. Yeah. How much longer is Timberline going to last? Huh? Right. Right. Who yeah. knows? Yeah, it's too bad. It's too bad. Those are. They're not more buildings that you could just kind of shape them. Like well, if it was off yeah. to the side. Yeah. Like litigation's gotten so crazy. You know what it is? Is that the median snowboarder doesn't give a shit. Because there's so many now. Yeah. Like there's our our community, but the community of well, of, yeah. of pro snowboarding and and this kind of media is not the mainstream. Well, you you get in. We've had people that have had all these injuries, mm-hmm. and there you know there are people that are just literally tearing themselves apart for no reason. Mm-hmm. And and it's you know that that part of it isn't. It, you know, when people go, oh, that just happens. And it's like, yeah, it doesn't really, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily really have to 90% just of people just go, they front they bank slaloms, holy bully, yeah, yeah, front yeah, pump yeah. tracks. Yeah. You know, pump tracks are popping up totally, all over the place. Totally. And it's happening in yeah. all these sports, like snowboarding and skiing are not, you know, it's, you've been able to fall off a giant cliff since the, the beginning of skiing. <laughs> like, that's, that's yeah, all, that's like, true. there's giant cliffs everywhere. <laughs> um, but the, when you build stuff that specifically for that, the small, medium sized stuff is super fun. Super and fun. These backcountry guys that are building the giant 
shit. I mean, that's you just build it. It's a job they're yeah, doing. That's their just job. Do it. Yeah. It's yeah. it's too bad. It's too bad we're so vulnerable. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. My, I gave up on Park. I, it, my mid thirties. Yeah. Like yeah. I was like, this is. I went to mid forties on it, but like last year, I spent the whole season trying to build up to like doing a no grab spin. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm. I'll still ride transition. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I will still ride transition, yeah, but yeah. gaps and tables, and I just, I don't want to be out. Yeah. I don't want to take, I don't want to lose, I, I equate, I immediately equate it to powder. Like, I can still just have so much fun riding soft snow. Yeah. And I put all my effort into um, the uh, timing thing, because I can get up, I can get up a local mountain. I, I, I have a routine where I go to Grouse. There's a bit of a bottleneck with the with the tram. Yeah. You bag lines for two hours. Get in your car, drive over to Cyprus. And just kick. And, and now the top chair just opened. And now you get all that stuff. And you you're know tell, you're telling everybody how you do that. Yeah, nobody does it. Dude, no one went to Baker either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you gotta edit that. That's a good spot to end it, dude. That is exactly right. Yeah, no, I will. I'll tell anyone who will listen. Yeah, and but we did. And, and then I'll probably be bummed Don't when it gets crazy when they're all there. Because right now I'm going to the grouse tram twenty minutes before first tram. Oh, sick! And parking, I've got a spot. I'm not like dealing with dial. insane thing. Got it. I put that effort in because those first few run turns are worth everything yeah now. well what i do at baker like i i don't get to the mountain until the afternoon now right and i'm still riding powder right you know and i you know where to go and i take pictures i take yeah. pictures of a couple specific areas and i don't take pictures of a couple of others <laughs> right specific right oh, it's not, i love your social media stuff can i just say it out loud <laughs> fuck dude there's nothing better <laughs> thank you than a bass rant and just like the turns of phrase and the fucking comedy that's in there but there's some serious lessons there too like there's i love there, it i love it it's like south park <laughs> yeah that's that's a good yeah yeah where was south park our whole lives i'm i'm Been really around a long time i'm really stoked that you've um you've gone into that mentor role because we i often talk about it in the snowboard community we've missed that kind of you know, we turn our backs on the pros so quickly. Well, We're like on to the next thing. I, I think so people got dumped and they didn't get to do what if you're you, doing. It's just, it's like, <laughs> so these sports where it's an individual sport, yeah. but yet you have all these friends that it's such, it's such a crazy time in your life when you're young and everyone's doing all these crazy things. However that ends up, um, you know, just losing sight that this, it's just a fun thing to do. And, but, and, but here we've been talking about how old we get, how can, how long can we do this? And now it's like, what, at what point do you realize, okay, this is a real thing. Yeah. Like, and it's our generation is still kind of funny about it. Yeah. Like, because it's still like, you know, we're the leading edge of that sword in a lot of ways. There's, you know, there's how many guys are older than me that do this 200 Right. But, I mean, what's what is that number? Uh, and at you, this level, right? Like that, that have yeah. just been doing like fifty, just been snowboarding, and like they and they've reengaged so many times now that their whole thing is so different. Like, yeah, you know, there's rad. You know, I was riding with Scott Downey Sick. last year, and that was the yeah. first time I'd ever gotten a ride with him. And just he's still skating, still you skating. Know, he's a vert. little older yeah. than us. Yeah. And he's he's just a powerhouse, and it's just a lot of guys that are like on this this tour of this sport that like you know when people like the money money really fluffed up the '90s like it just oh kind of, yeah it just I mean it just snowboarding as soon as snowboards got that small and became a commodity you know when yes. people are talking yeah. about like you how many units did you do? like <laughs> yeah, the moment yeah, you yeah. refer to the these things like that you've lost it in a way and and it's you know i've been lucky in a lot of respects because i always had i always had fishing i could just go no i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna go like i will i'm not gonna say i didn't jump on a trampoline in my backyard but i'm not gonna go do a trampoline demo <laughs> like that 
that's not going to happen. Right. You can stop talking to me. And like, and that's how, you know, people are like, did you guys get fired or anything? I'm like, I've, no, I never got fired because I'm always honest with people. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Like, right. You, you, right. Sh- you shut up. <laughs> like, no. And so I, I think, you know, hang on, like, have being an asthmatic and stuff and having this sport like there was there was times where i felt like i was trapped in snowboarding i was doing it because i i can't really if i go ride an indoor masonite ramp i have to leave mm. because mm. i start getting affected you know that's such dust, a weird yeah. the dust and i'm like are you kidding me I, I, like, you just said that dust can, is killing me I can like taste this. the dust yeah. right now and that i'm eliminated yeah. like i i Chip my blood deoxygen, you know, it's yeah. like I'm trapped in snowboarding. I was gonna I wanted to only surf at one point. Yeah. Because this was just crushing my A lot bones. of people like to, yeah. I'm yeah. like, I'm just gonna switch to surfing. You know, my ear like keeps me out of the water. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you you have to go back to this. And you're then it's stuck like, with snowboarding. You're stuck at Mount you're stuck, you're cursed with Mount Baker. <laughs> like, smack. Wake up, kid. <laughs> like a oh, different approach. That yeah. was that and that's where Craig came in. Yeah. Like that's absolutely where Craig came in. Cause he was like, you know, I was dumb enough to say things to him like that. Like I'm mm. done with it. I'm done with mm. snowboarding. Mm. It's kicking my ass. I'm over it. He, the mo we had a, we had a little moment where, um, I was riding with Mark Friesen and we were doing this stupid line where we were, uh, all you, all you guys, if you know where rat trap is at Baker, there's a little super tube up there. It's a little shoot. And we were coming across the base and we had built an in run over that chute and we were clearing the drop and landing in the field. Jeez. And we're both, and we're both goofy and we're both just drifting big threes over this and landing in this field. It was just stupid flat landing. You got to walk a mile to get out. Yeah. It, the snow's unconsolidated there. And it's like, you could probably fall out of a helicopter there. Like Mikey Bassett, you know? yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, a good place yeah. to drop you. Yeah, like yeah. you're, you're going to be okay. So it kind of sounds scary, but it was fun. And we get down to chair two looks or chair three looks right at that chair two and chair three look right at that. And we get down there and Craig's going, what are you guys doing? <laughs> like, was that, did you guys just hug me? Well, he ate nine Advil this morning to be here. And I'm like, everything's wrong with me. I can't, I can't walk or anything. So I'm like, it's kind of our last day. Like, Jesus. like we're like we're we're done with this, and he he uh, he's like I'm gonna take surfing, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit, and uh, I start talking about the specific issues I have, and just like with Craig, you never really realize that he had any problems. Mm. He just he, right. the way he carried himself, like until I read the book, like it, it never occurred to me that Craig lost a BMX race. Right. Like I'm a little kid. I'm nine. He's 13 or 14. And all I've ever seen this do is ride up trees and pass everybody and wheelie across town. Like yeah. this dude never lost a race. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, you know, just that little moment in the book really kind of was like, of course, of course he worked through all of these, all of these issues. And uh, what he had going on with his back, and what I had going on with my back was the same thing. And he, fi- he fixed it. So he wanted to share that with me on a surf trip, which was like that's was, amazing. And it was what was his what was his trick? If I'm thinking my best, he was a little... <laughs> just other just staying, you know, increasing flexibility. Yeah, um, not riding too much, mm. not over pumping yourself. Yeah, you know, hours in, I would ri- I just would I just rode too much. Right, I absolutely rode too much. I quit pro snowboarding to go snowboarding like it, it's that stupid <laughs> you know yeah, that was yeah. i wasn't snowboarding enough like, yeah. i'm not snowboarding enough this right. is dumb like i need to be at home riding and uh it it really overdeveloped some things and so the flexibility adding other sport he's like dude you need other hobbies and uh, he got a buddy of ours that was in town is actually a stuntman and a trainer oh sick and he was renting craig's house and so he's like, get with Mike, we're going to get this figured out. And you know, it was just that simple. We had a super fun trip. I went, when we went down to Haystack, we were staying, we were staying in Oregon at his place and, uh, Hibden 
and Donahue and all those guys happened to be down there surfing at the same time that Sick. week. And it was, it was just kind of a, it was a really fun, you know, and I'd surfed a bunch already, but that was like, you know, being able to, being able to go there with like Craig and Scott knew how to work all the currents and everything. Right. Just kind of, right. it opens it up. Yeah, the following first... someone out there in those currents is better than just getting your head pounded. <laughs> the first guy I went with was he was like semi pro like the, the dude is an unreal surfer and he took a, took me out to Nia and La Push and stuff. Yeah. And I could paddle out behind him. And then he'd turn me around and like go, yeah. paddle, push me in on a wave and I'd ride yeah. to the beach. I he'd have to come back in and get me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was you know, it's that whole world. Yeah, man. So that I like challenges and that that really got me going there like craig craig's ability to just fix pro like that solution to everything mentality is just is just such a breath of fresh air and i had no like the first time i met him was right down here where those trees are the track was and i was i had started my ear surgeries when i was about seven what so was the issue i've got a, it's a condition it's a generally it's a mastoidectomy um they rebuilt my ear canal due mm -hmm. to a cholesteatoma which is a small cyst okay that actually you know it eats its way through the ear canal that's really hard for balance and it's stuff right hard I, when i look at like i think it bugged me in my teens a little bit because i i drag i drag both my hands so i use my fingertips mm -hmm. and i'm feeling and when i when i would spin um, you definitely get like, you get a freebie occasionally, not all the time, but like pretty, like an in, pretty intense one. Yeah. And it was not, it was not a guaranteed thing, but I just think, I think with the, I, I think probably with the, the deep snow and like having to look through your goggles, it might've helped I, in some ways. Cause I don't really feel like I have balance issues. I think yeah. I got really lucky Yeah. because some people end up having, you know, their, on anti-nausea medication and that kind of thing. Right. So you so you first meet him here, and you. So you're, I'm, a, I'm you're a little kid. I'm getting, kid. I do these surgeries, so I'm like getting the Rocky movie was out. So I'm like, I think I'm Rocky in the mornings. I'm getting up on my BMX bike to ride to the park. Right. I got a bowling ball in my backpack. You know, I'm occasionally trying to ride up Little Mountain in the morning before school. Wow. And then go to the track, and you know that came a little bit later. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm like, I think I'm nine. I'm still on a clunky bike. I know it was a heavy bike and, uh, all the big kids were there and it's like, you see big kids and you're like, Oh, oh you know, like they're just getting chased. What's going yeah, on? Yeah. Yeah. At nine, at, at nine, it's like, Oh, the yeah. big kids, dude. And they're ripping They're Our starting gate, our starting gate is a big giant tabletop. Also, Sick. like it's shaped all four directions. Yeah. You, you push your bike up, but come down the big kids could air the whole thing. And there was like three dudes. It looked like the whole crew was there. Like as far as I could tell, like in my little memory, all these dudes were there. And uh, there's probably three or four of them are just bring, airing the thing out, setting it down on the tranny on the other side. And I'm just, I'm going, whoa, dude, you can jump the whole starting gate. So I'm sitting there leaning on my bike and waiting for these guys to clear out because I'm going to jump this. I'm, you know, my head, I've already got this down. Nice. So I start, they get out of the, they get out of the entrance to the park there and I start charging at this thing and I land like just on the, <laughs> I just case the thing like yeah. a little kid does Deck it, yeah. and I roll down the other side and my like, bike's making all those noises like freaking bricks in a wheelbarrow. And I come back around to the, where I'm going to start again. And Craig is sitting there already. Like he, he was, he knew what I was going to do. So he says to me, Hey. He rides over to the lip. He's like, jump a little bit farther every time on the side mm. until you get to here. And try not, don't try to clear it. Try to get used to landing on a transition. Like a hip. Like a hip. And just, and he goes tearing off. Yeah. Wheelies out of there. And I'm like, well, right. Maybe you could, big kids aren't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's in the book, there's a, there's a section where he talks about incrementally increasing you know, just whatever, like yeah. just, in, just do it all in increments. And like, 
you know, as a kid, I got, I got a second right there where he's like, Hey, this is, this is how you do this right here. Like, what oh. kind of a dude was he like as a teenager? Was he like a badass around town, like shoplifting and, and lighting fires? They, well, they, or was he just so those, like a those focused guys were competitor? Just old enough. You know, they go through the middle school and now I'm in the middle school and they, yeah, he got yeah, through the high yeah. school and there he goes. Yeah. And yeah. like, I met the first, you know, and, the first time I met some of the other other rad dudes in town, we're BMX bandits and we're riding around town like flinging loves bread at people, or just doing yeah, stupid yeah, kid yeah, shit, yeah, kid flipping shit. people off. Right, right. He sucks. <laughs> like whatever. Yeah, yeah, Water. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. our side, like this dude down the street here. The first time I met him and all his buddies, he's chasing us through the high school grounds in his Scirocco. <laughs> and like, and that's, we just wanted, I mean, do you yeah. want people to chase? You're egging people you on. Just want, like we, that whole chase thing with the, our local PD guys. And yeah. And they'd see, and you'd forget though later, cause then they'd see you and you're pretty recognizable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh shit, are we running again? Yeah. Are we back on this? running? But yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't really, um, no Craig till it, the the mountain really kicked off and then mm. the stupid like this the antics of those guys like driving up to the hill like getting into each other's doors getting under the bumper like yeah it, it was real yeah and it was just but it was fun like it's you know but it was part of it, it was the 80s taking the piss just yeah yeah you just yeah cars got dents in them on the <laughs> that's cars are good for it cars are good for dents <laughs> And, uh, the, the, there, you know, the, those guys, yeah, they're just being a little older on the hill, dusting you, what, you know, just being younger kids, it, it didn't, when it kicked in the, the one where it kicked in, where Craig, where I was like, all right, me and Craig are kind of contemporaries in a weird kind of way. We get to the hill and all the Burton, the Burton guys are going to do their Bur Burton photo shoot. And they've got all next year's boards all leaned up and you pull into the parking lot and it's like, oh, Burton, it's all about Burton. And right now at this point, I think we're, I'm just getting on this GNS lib thing. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, no, Northwest, like, no, no, this Burton thing's yeah. not a thing. What East you guys Coast, doing? beat it. To so me and my buddy go over there and we grab all their boards up and the E-Lodge, <laughs> the E-Lodge, oh yeah, no, this is, this is bad. The E-Lodge is right behind us and we bundle them up and we just drop them off the edge right there and it's not this this story's turned into they threw them off cliffs and all this kind of stuff sure sure <clears throat> not a cliff it's just right behind the elaws there's a corner but so now instead of like hey check it out the burton boards are all lined up looking killer they're all in a pile right here <laughs> and we wrote oi in blue spray paint and they had all this marker paint there yep for the jumps that they were building all this Fun mm. stuff they're doing with snow cats mm. and stuff. This is that it's a catalog shoot. It was Ford, Jacoby, Brushy, Wallace, and Craig. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. And I'm like, do 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 do. And so I got blue paint. I got blue paint on my gloves now. Yeah. I'm like, I, yeah. I am I'm a criminal and I'm already caught. And yeah. In my head, I'm like, I'm out of there. So we go riding around the hill. It's a great day. It's super nice. It the Sun was out, it's powder everywhere. We're freaking ripping it up. I get back to the parking lot. I've totally forgotten there's grown men <laughs> probably wanting to kill me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, dude, I get back to my car, and Craig is crouched in between the cars, just waiting for me like a cat. And I'm like, that's weird. What do you, hey, Craig, what are you doing now? Like, yeah. what, what are you, oh, I'm like, oh, shit. And I turn to run, I run smack dab into Jacoby. He's a big dude. He's, too. And I'm like, I'm a little dude. I'm like, I'm 17 now. So yeah, now I'm 161 pounds or whatever. I'm like, dead stop. I'm like, uh oh. And Craig wraps up my arms. I don't know where my board is at this point. And, and I'm like, what? And he's like, head or gut? And I'm like, oh, you, I'm like, I'm getting ready to get mouthy. Yeah. Boom, airs me out. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> didn't hurt. You know, one of those. And, and so Mike goes to go, I don't think, so here's another thing to this. Mike is probably the nicest person in the world. Yeah. I don't think, this is probably the first person he's ever punched, ever. In his <laughs> sure. Life. I feel bad saying this. I made Mike Jacoby punch somebody. Unbelievable. So Craig, 
<laughs> Craig sees the headshot coming and turns me away. And Mike's and Mike stops. And I'm all like, what? What? And he's like, oh, he's had enough. I'm like, no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike's like, dude, shut up. I'm like, I can't. I'm friends with Rankwick. Like, you, like, you just shut up. And But at that moment, I was like, oh, Craig, Craig likes me. That's like, rad. I'm like, oh, this is great. And that story, how stupid it is, go, gets funnier. Years later, I've realized everything Craig's told me is stuff I should have done. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. I had that. I figured it out in my 30s. And uh, <laughs> so I start getting these Burton boards. I, I started riding Burton boards at camp just because they were so readily available. I was taking yeah. runs on them. I started riding Burton boards at camp because I was watching Terje go across the flats. And I'm like, that look, it just looks different. And, you know, riding a Burton board is not going to turn you into Terje. No. But, um, it, the JB was riding them too. And he's like, you really need to try my, he had the custom X's were a thing at that yeah, point. And I'm yeah. like, you really need to try one of these. And they were, they were really fun in that era. So I'm riding, I'm riding Burton's occasionally. I know Dave Downing a little bit. And so I'm getting some boards from Dave. And then I start working at the Hill. I'm like, none of these young people really know the history of Burton and Craig here and how cool it really is. Like what, like, the people don't see Burton as a overcoming things. Right. Like they just won. It's yeah, that yeah, whole thing yeah, where they yeah, just, they've yeah. always won and they're always, you know, they don't no clue on how they got there, how they maintain their own company. They own they the ownership of it. That's hard to do in this country. It's hard to do anywhere. So I start getting these boards from, from Dave and I'm just sharing them with the, the rental kits and like they do poker runs. I'm like, Hey, there's all these boards right here. If you guys want to try them. And, uh, you know, they get through them. Some of them are, you know, doing the Northwest thing. And they're like, no, I'm not, I'm not riding that thing. Some of them are like, well, these are really fun. And all, one year I get a stack of boards and they're from Craig's facility from JG. And like, you know, obviously I'm like, okay, Jake knows I'm doing this now. And at the end of the season, I just hand them out. Um, they they'd go to the winner of the poker run race or we rad dad in the parking lot. I'm like, Hey, yeah. this is, this is from Burton and Craig Kelly. Have a good time on this thing. So fun to be able to do that. Wow. And Jake and Dave are allowing me to do this. The Netflix. And I'm like, is, you know, is, is <laughs> you know, how far, how many of these stories does Jake know? Right. Right. And so the Netflix right. thing comes on and Jake's talking about, Oh yeah, you know, we're doing really good in business and everything's fine. And we feel like the whole snowboards world is real creamy. And then some idiot at Mount Baker will do something stupid. <laughs> and I'm all, I'm watching this with my wife going, Oh shit. <laughs> like, oh, this is me. And then the next clip is I had gone to Tahoe and I'm on one of my boards and there's this big log in the woods and I can't, I think I was with Kramer or somebody and we shoot this and, um, uh, I climb up in the woods. I'm like, I can ride that log. I'm gonna ride that log and then come down here and launch into the road or something. It'd be a fun thing to do. I get up there, do it. He sets up the camera. I go up, I hook an edge in the middle of this giant old fur that's fallen down and just wreck oh, myself, no. dislocate my shoulder, just rip the meat off of it. Oh man. And I'm hurt. And I bounce off the thing and, and uh, I stand, I do the thing. I stand up. I'm, I'm fine, Brad. I'm going to get in my car and drive home for a couple months and I'll come back and see you later. Like, that's what I did. I was hurt. And so, yeah, Jake, in the middle of that rider deal, he's like, yeah, uh, some lady at Mount Baker will do something stupid. And like, I can't, I, I need to watch it again. But I'll put he's it referring up, yeah. to me and yeah. here's the clip. No way. That is should be on the floor in the garbage at right, fall line. Right, like, right, how did right. this ever survive? How, how did, did he get, get his there? hand on it? And yeah. here, here it is. That's direct. pretty sick, dude. <laughs> That's <laughs> incredible. Another one of those moments. Young people that are doing one sport and they're devoting their whole life to it. Like they talk about, there's some of these riders that are really in the competition and they step away from it. But like, that's really understandable and that's really healthy. Like it's. When you see a seven-time world champion at something, like, <laughs> yeah. this guy's got issues. <laughs> like, yeah. okay, yeah. like, but you want to break all of these records, and it's like, <laughs> you got to come down from that. Like, I I know world champions. Like, I, I know these guys, and they're, you know, they're a different breed. 
you know, and there's there's one and done dudes with holding the holding the beer keg and yep. you know they live living wild and free, and then there's this this hyper devoted, you know, it's a little detrimental to your actual existence, and there's there's happy mediums in there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, losing a guy like Craig is just because he just had he lived he lived so good. Like, yeah, he just had it. He had life figured out. That's that's a big thing. I mean, that's that's crazy. All right, Bass. Thanks, buddy. All right on. Big love. Big yeah. Love. Great to see you again. Good to see you. Every time I see you, it's the fucking chuckle fest. <laughs> yeah, I, I love just it. Just do this anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Killer homie. Thanks, man. F and Rad shout outs this week to Bass and Zoe. Thank you for the kind hospitality. It's always nice to see you guys. Special thanks to Jason Bros for the Ashbury goggles I've been depending on all year. And thank you, Patreon supporters. You make my world a better place. Tag New Greens in any F and Rad post for a sample pack of the greatest organic green juice on the planet. And 1910 is giving away a hoodie, so tag them for a chance to win it. Be sure to come back next week for another episode of F and Rad Snowboarding presented by Skyview Campers and brought to you by F and Rad Productions.